Chapter 381 Feeling the Pain of the Future It was indeed not that easy to find his master a wife. But very quickly, Zhang Lan was stunned. He recalled Marshal Aunt Miao Yu's words back then. At that time, his Marshal Aunt had said that she had admired his master for a long time and wanted him to be a matchmaker. So, could admiration have transformed into adoration? Or perhaps was the first half of the sentence true and the second half false? It couldn't be ruled out that the entire sentence was true as well. Zhang Lan sighed inwardly. It seemed like he couldn't eliminate Marshal Aunt Miao Yu. She even had to be the first choice. Next time, he would ask his master. He would see what his master felt about this. At this moment, Zhang Lan saw Marshal Aunt Chen Shi. Since he had already asked about it, should he ask about his master's thoughts? It was also good to prepare for the future. But before he could say anything, Chen Shi suddenly said. Since you've asked about Miao Yu, as a junior, you should be very interested about her face under the veil, right? No, Zhang Lan shook his head. He was really not curious about that. In his eyes, there was no difference whether Marshal Aunt Miao Yu wore a veil or not. Chen Shi was somewhat surprised. The veil brought about a mysterious effect. It would make many people want to know the face under the veil. Zhang Lan actually didn't have such curiosity. Then what else do you want to ask? Chen Shi asked. She no longer knew what Zhang Lan would ask. Does my master have someone he admires? Zhang Lan hesitated for a moment before asking. This question made Chen Shi think for a long time. In the past, your master and I were good brothers. After that, as we were of different genders, I slowly ignored him. At that time, he had no opinion about women. That's what you wanted to ask, isn't it? If it is, indeed, he doesn't have someone on his mind. But if it's not, then forget about it, we'll be discovered if I use my divination technique on him. Zhang Lan. A good brother. Zhang Lan felt that his martial aunt Chen Shi had many stories. Speaking of which, your master did everything in his power to send you here, and you're discussing this with me? Chen Shi asked. Zhang Lan seemed to have come here to discuss the emotional past of the various summit leaders. He had asked about Miao Yu and Mo Zhengdong. Ah! Uh, could it be that Miao Yu had told Zhang Lan that she admired Mo Zhengdong, causing him to have the idea of finding his master a mistress? And since it was pretty weird for him to ask Mo Zhengdong about such matters, he had asked her directly about it. And he didn't want to find out more about himself? Chen Shi looked at Zhang Lan. This boy had deep intentions. Sorry for troubling Marshal Ant. Zhang Lan lowered his head apologetically. Are you confused about your road to becoming an immortal? Chen Shi asked. I've never been lost before. Zhang Lan shook his head. That's good. By the way, Chen Shi continued pouring tea for herself. The goddess is Zhu Qing's disciple, right? I heard that she is very doted on. Yes. Zhang Lan nodded. Xiao Yu was indeed more favored in the third summit. If she's free, help me ask Zhu Qing if she feels anything about females having a relationship that exceeds that of friendship. Chen Shi spoke. Zhang Lan. Zhang Lan doubted the sincerity of this question. Was it because his martial aunt Chen Shi had already guessed martial aunt Miao Yu's actions and was treating him the same way? It felt like he was being teased. Aren't you going to drink some tea? Seeing Zhang Lan in a daze, Chen Shi poured another cup of tea for her. Zhang Lan looked down at the teacup that had been refilled. Then, he took a sip. It was her second time pouring tea. If he did not drink it, it would be disrespecting his martial aunt. So he could only try to take a sip. How does it taste? Chen Shi put down the teapot in her hand and asked with a smile. It tastes a bit bitter, Zhang Lan said. It was extremely bitter. He could already feel the bitterness even though he just took a sip. If he drank a cup, then. Perhaps it was bitter water. Cultivators live long lives, but this path is not easy to walk. It will naturally be a bit bitter. Go and experience the future. Oh right. Chen Shi looked at Zhang Lan and said. You might have misunderstood something from the beginning. Your master sent you here not for me to divine something about you. Even though he asked me to answer your questions, but all the deductions will be done by you. I'm just providing you with this ability. Therefore, go ahead and experience the hardships on the path to immortality. Marshal Aunt Chen Zai's words rang in Zhang Lan's ears. At this moment, he felt as if he had fallen into the endless starry sky. 
he could no longer hear anything. Starlight flowed around him. Everything around him changed. He watched on and felt everything change. Then, he felt his footsteps moving forward. He, who was at the late stage Heaven Immortal Realm, seemed to see his perfected golden body and his great Tao being acknowledged by the world. The celestial immortal realm was right before his eyes. In that instant, Zhang Lan felt the changes in his advancement. He was about to become a celestial immortal. It was different from the innkeeper's side. This was a deduction. He was in a situation where he could deduce the various possibilities that could happen. Zhang Lan discovered that advancing to become a celestial immortal was a fusion of the Tao and his golden body. The slightest mistake could lead to failure. In his deduction, he saw countless failures. It was like a line that continuously advanced through the maze, but it also led to countless dead ends. But the line did not stop. It continued to turn back and move forward. Unless it succeeded, it was impossible to stagnate. After an unknown period of time and countless failures, Zhang Lan realized that advancing to become a celestial immortal was much harder than he thought. There were countless changes through this advancement process and there were many accidents that could potentially happen. If he were to attempt a breakthrough without sufficient preparation, he would be doomed. After a long period of time and countless attempts at trying to advance to become a celestial immortal, the last golden light flashed, he finally saw himself advancing to become a celestial immortal. He saw the scene of him being a celestial immortal. He seemed to be able to conquer the vast Grand Tao. Crack. Everything shattered. At this moment, he opened his eyes. He realized that his master might have paid a huge price to persuade Marshal Ant Chen Shi to unleash this technique on him. This opportunity would allow him to experience the many possible ways to achieve immortality. And indeed, he had obtained a fortuitous opportunity from this experience. Except, this opportunity might have far exceeded his master's expectations. Similarly, this also showed that the fortuitous opportunities his master found for him were always the best. As he thought of this, the sunlight began to enter his eyes. It was over. After some time, it was indeed beyond his expectations. He had always thought that his martial aunt would be the one deducing the result out for him through her divination technique. He never expected that the process and outcome would be carried out by him alone. His martial aunt merely provided him the platform to do so. The moment he opened his eyes, he found a girl sitting opposite him. She was looking at him with her hands on her cheeks. Seeing him open his eyes, the other party even blinked. It was as if she was surprised. Then, she smiled. Junior brother, you're finally awake. This person was naturally Xiao Yu. It seemed like a long time had passed. Otherwise, Xiao Yu would not have found this place. Senior sister, how long has it been? Zhang Lan asked curiously. Junior brother. Xiao Yu pouted. Do you realize that every time you wake up, you will ask this question? This means that junior brother often falls into this sort of epiphany which causes you to lose track of the time. But I am always by your side. Without my help, a bird's nest would have formed on your head. Zhang Lan. Chapter 382 Great Strength Golden Body Pill. Ten years? Zhang Lan nodded. It did not seem like a long time. This did not have much an impact on his cultivation time plan, but the benefits he received this time were very obvious. It was extremely beneficial to his advancement. However, he was still far from advancing to become a celestial immortal. He didn't have to worry about it for now. The most important thing was to achieve immortal hood on the surface. Currently, he had been in the sect for 540 years. After another 30 years of seclusion, he would be able to go out and gain experience. On the surface, his immortal ascension was imminent. Moreover, after becoming an immortal, it would be the wedding. It was unknown if he would be at the perfected heaven immortal realm or early stage celestial immortal realm then. In theory, he should be at the perfected heaven immortal realm. After all, it would only take 180 years for all nine beams of light to be fully lit up. It was five beams now, and there were still 75 years to go. In addition to these 10 years, he had been in the sect for 540 years. In another 75 years, that would be 615 years. At that time, he should have just advanced to the perfected heaven immortal realm and he might still need a few more years to advance to become a celestial immortal. However, would the wedding be delayed for another few decades? Maybe. But, if Kunlun wanted the goddess to completely leave the dragon race, 
Kunlun would definitely want them to get married as soon as possible. But there was a chance the dragon race would attempt to stall the wedding. If the dragons were anxious for them to get married, there would definitely be a problem. When did senior sister come here? Zhang Lan asked as he looked at Xiao Yu. I've been cultivating here all these years. Master brought me here. Xiao Yu propped her chin on her hands as she looked at Zhang Lan. But Martial Aunt Chen Shi has many strange birds here. They would always sit on you. Junior brother isn't too good at staying vigilant when you are out. I have troubled senior sister. Zhang Lan said. Of course. Xiao Yu was in high spirits. Where's Martial Aunt Chen Shi? Zhang Lan didn't see anyone else. Since he had already woken up, it was time for him to leave. She's in her room. What does junior brother want to do? I'll go in and help relay the message. Xiao Yu pointed at the bamboo house behind her. I'm done here. It's time to take my leave. Does senior sister still want to stay here? Zhang Lan asked Xiao Yu. Martial aunt isn't in a good mood, Zhang Lan said after leaving the sixth summit. When he bade farewell to her, his martial aunt seemed to be in low spirits. She seemed to have suffered a blow. Yes, martial aunt asked me to help her ask my master a question and I did so. Then, after I told martial aunt the answer, martial aunt became like that. Xiao Yu walked to Zhang Lan's side and explained. Zhang Lan. It was probably the question she had mentioned earlier. Although he was curious, he did not ask. It did not matter whether he understood it or not. However, even though he had been here for so long, he had yet to sign in. Now that he was about to leave, naturally, he had to sign in. Perhaps he would get something good. Soon, he heard a familiar voice. Ding. Signed in successfully. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the gift of the Great Tao. You have obtained the pill, Great Strength Golden Body Pill. Great Strength Golden Body Pill. A golden pill formed from the Tao. Eating it can allow one to attain the perfected golden body in a short period of time. Only those above the true immortal realm can consume it. Great strength golden body pill? This was similar to the powerful Vajrapani pill. However, the effects were very different. The powerful Vajrapani pill could strengthen the power of blood chi, while the great strength golden body pill could strengthen the physical body. It could allow one to perfect one's golden body. He was still a long way from perfecting his golden body, but once it was perfected, his strength should be extremely powerful. However, he did not know what would happen once the effects wore off. He could save it for later. Just in case, since he was about to go out for training, it was right to prepare more things. Senior sister, I'm about to become an immortal, Zhang Lan said on the way back to the ninth summit. That will still take a long time. Master said that we have to take it one step at a time. We can't rush it. Xiao Yu placed her hands behind her back and spoke like an elder. N. Zhang Lan nodded, he did not speak again. He wanted to remind his senior sister that she had no chance of winning the next challenge. At that time, both of them would be at the human immortal realm. The next morning, Xiao Yu took the wooden sword that Zhang Lan had given her and prepared to leave. However, she hesitated for a moment before walking over. However, she hesitated for a moment before walking over to Zhang Lan. She leaned her head over and hugged him. Zhang Lan felt the wooden sword behind him. If he held onto Xiao Yu with the wooden sword, would he be able to easily cut off her waist? Junior brother, remember to give me a candied fruit. The principle of fairness cannot be forgotten. After speaking, Xiao Yu took a step back, then mounted her sword and left. She was still wearing the shoes that Zhang Lan had given her. Seeing the shoes, Zhang Lan remembered that Xiao Yu still owed him for a fair transaction. However, he never asked for anything, the principle of fairness. Zhang Lan felt that he had actually suffered a loss, he had to fork out money and travel far. Xiao Yu just needed to hug him, but he did not object to this fairness. With these thoughts in mind, Zhang Lan arrived at the peak of the ninth summit. He had gained something from his trip to the sixth summit. He naturally had to report to his master, How are you feeling? On the peak of the ninth summit, Mo Jangdong asked Zhang Lan. I'm more confident about my breakthrough now. Zhang Lan replied honestly. The reason why he was able to become an immortal was actually because of his master. The thousand-year providence had allowed him to easily step into the human immortal realm. Are you going to continue your secluded cultivation? Mo Jangdong asked. 
Zhang Lan nodded slightly and said, I would like to go out and gain experience the next time I come out of seclusion. Training before becoming an immortal. Have you considered where to go? Mo Jangdong did not refuse. Zhang Lan had told him about this a long time ago. It was rare for him to go out on a trip, so it was not good to spoil his enthusiasm. I want to walk around, but I haven't decided which direction to go, Zhang Lan said. He really didn't plan on going anywhere. The main reason was to find a place to cultivate in seclusion for a period of time. Before coming back. This was enough. His master agreed and asked him to tell him when the time came. This way, Zhang Lan no longer had to worry about not being able to leave. It was indeed not recommended for one to leave Kunlun just before one was about to become an immortal. Fortunately, his master did not say much. To outsiders, he would continue saying that his master would not allow him to leave. If some spies found out that he was going out this time. He wondered if they would think that Kunlun wanted him to do some secret mission. However, there shouldn't be any spies watching him this time. Even if they kept an eye on him, they could not confirm that he was out. Things were different now. He was already at the late-stage void refinement realm on the surface, so he was no longer an ordinary person. He was not someone that ordinary people could lay their hands on. So even if he were to make a trip out and come back, no one would probably notice him. With this thought in mind, Zhang Lan descended the Ninth Summit. Many years had passed. It had been a long time since Ba Country obtained the deity position. It was time to listen to the changes that had occurred across the grand desolate world. Along the way, Zhang Lan arrived at the place where a Tao lecture would be held. It was just the right time for the lecture. After listening for a moment, he discovered that the lecturer was teaching a void refinement technique. The Samadhi Divine Fire is divided into the upper, middle, and lower levels. The upper level is referred to as King Fire, the middle level is Aristocrat Fire, and the lower level is Citizen Fire. By condensing three different types of Qi and igniting one's essence, energy, and fire, the fire can be formed. That's how it's called the Samadhi Fire. It's also termed as the Samadhi Divine Fire. Chapter 383 Training Begins, Samadhi Divine Fire. Zhang Lan had come into contact with it a long time ago. It only took him a small effort to master it. In fact, only after one finishes tempering one's golden body can the Samadhi Fire really be considered a divine fire. To be born from the Tao was naturally extraordinary. In other words, the Samadhi Divine Fire was divided into three levels. The first referred to the flames unleashed by those below the human immortal realm. Next was the flames condensed from a true immortal's immortal body. The highest level can only be unleashed by a golden body acknowledged by the great Tao. There was a qualitative change every time. There shouldn't be any qualitative changes above. After listening for some time, the lecture came to an end. Zhang Lan tried using the Samadhi Divine Fire and was quite skilled in it. After his breakthrough, he did not spend much time cultivating. He simply familiarized himself with it. The power of this fire was not bad, but compared to the power of nine bulls, it would take too long before his opponent would be killed. There would be too many unknown variables that could pop up. It was not strong enough to kill enemies. He could not give the enemy too much time to react. It was too dangerous. A moment later, those people began to gather again to discuss the situation across the grand desolate world. The dragon race has been very strange recently. I heard a rumor that they were actually urging the various summit leaders to let the goddess get married as soon as possible. A. Have you heard of it too? I thought I had heard it wrong. I chanced upon this news when the dragons came last time. Didn't they disagree with it initially? Why are they now suddenly even more anxious than Kunlun? I don't know. I keep having the feeling that all the major factions have had strange reactions over the years. Ba Country and the Demon Race are no longer the same either. Previously, they were still at loggerheads with each other. But now, the Ba Country has stopped fighting and gone back. That's right. The Ba country retreated at a bizarre speed. They acted decisively the moment they made the decision to cease the fight. No one knows what they are up to. On the other hand, the demons who had been clamoring did not have any intention of chasing after Ba country after seeing it retreat. They have already returned to recuperate. The battle in the northern wastelands is almost over. The central plains is also a little strange. The heavenly human race and the heavenly feather phoenix race are still fighting but they seem to have some sort of tacit understanding. 
they will only take action against each other periodically. Moreover, this time, the heavenly human race is no longer biting hard onto the heavenly feather phoenix race. It is as if their internal stance has changed. I can't understand these people. Right now, the Magus Immortals of Mount Numinous are still attacking the underground devil race. The underground devils are still in a conservative state and rarely take the initiative to attack. There hasn't been any news from the eastern wastelands. I wonder if the Kilin race is still fighting. Do you feel that these people most likely have a motive? The people who stopped the war must have achieved their goal. The others have yet to stop because they have yet to reach their goal. So what are they after? Everyone shrugged. This was not something that cultivators like them could know. It was impossible for them to guess either. Let's be honest. Is the goddess really going to marry the senior brother of the Ninth Summit? I heard that she's waiting for the senior brother of the Ninth Summit to become an immortal. However, I heard that the senior brother's talent in Kunlun is rather average. It's not easy to become an immortal, right? Didn't they say that he was actually a different type of genius recently? It's hard to say if it would be difficult for him to achieve immortality. Furthermore, I heard that his cultivation has always maintained the progress of a genius. He's definitely not bad. That's because he has the resources of an entire summit. Will you be able to keep it up even if I give you the resources? I think you just don't want to admit that others are better than you, especially those who were worse than you before. I just want proof. Do you have proof? Many people did not even know that the Ninth Summit had a senior brother. Zhang Lan did not continue listening. They were discussing about his marriage with Xiao Yu again. The matter of the marriage had made him involuntarily enter the eyes of others. Many people had begun to find out more about him. However, Kunlun had been deliberately trying to wash away his criticisms. Therefore, it was very difficult to completely escape the notice. Fortunately, it did not affect him too much. Array formations were ultimately array formations. Strength was everything. After not paying attention to all these, Zhang Lan began to think about what those people had just said. The main point was the dragon race. They were actually rushing him to get married? This was not normal. Looks like they have other motives. They probably can't demand a higher price for Xiao Yu anymore. In other words, Xiao Yu is no longer of any value. They are now searching for what they can take after the marriage. It's most likely for the Eighth Prince. Zhang Lan didn't know the exact details, but he had to be mentally prepared. Since it was related to Xiao Yu, it meant that it was related to him. As for the movements of the various factions across the Grand Desolate World. Currently, it could be confirmed that once they obtained the deity position, they would recuperate. There was no longer a need for a war when they obtained what they wanted. The Heavenly Feather Phoenix race must have obtained something, and so should the Heavenly Human race. It would appear that it should all come to a conclusion in these few years. Zhang Lan didn't think too much about it. He went to other places to see if he obtained anything new. Sometimes, information might be wrong and he needed to cross-check the information he had obtained. After that, he would return to the Ninth Summit, he had to go into seclusion. The next time he left the Ninth Summit would be to go out to train. At that time, he wondered if there would be other deity positions. If there were more, he hoped it wasn't the heavenly human race who got it. Otherwise, it would be troublesome. Imperial Lord Shi he hadn't made a sound all these years, so this was also good for him. As long as he did not reveal too much, it would not be easy to get involved. Although it was very difficult for him to escape from the vortex, it was safer for him to be invisible. In the evening. Soon, Zhang Lan returned to the Ninth Summit. After settling some simple matters, he brought the vegetative egg and Udambara flower into the Netherworld cave. Speaking of which, it had been a long time since someone had come to borrow the aura of the Netherworld to temper their body. The last time someone did so was when his senior sister came. Did Master not agree to this all these years, or did they find a better place? No one knew. However, he still remembered his master using his rainbow auspicious cloud spell on him. He still kept it in his heart that he would give it back to his master after a thousand years. After entering the Netherworld cave, Zhang Lan did not make any movements. In front of the Netherworld cave, fallen leaves fluttered about as time silently passed. Spring rain was falling, and spring returned to the earth. Snow soon fell and vegetation soon withered. Spring passed and autumn came and went. The aura of the netherworld cave grew thicker and thicker and a new eruption was about to begin. It was just not that intense. Winter. 
it was snowing heavily. Zhang Lan walked out of the netherworld cave. He didn't bring the vegetative egg or the Udambara flower with him. He looked at the sky and at the white clouds. Then, he walked towards the courtyard. If he remembered correctly, today marked his 570th year in the sect. For the past 30 years, apart from the necessary days where he had to be busy, he spent the rest of his time cultivating, reading books, and replenishing himself. He wanted to move forward step by step and become stronger. He was still a few years away from the perfected heaven immortal realm. On this trip out, he needed to perfect his great Tao. He wondered if it would be of any help to his cultivation. Regardless, it was time. He needed to go out and train. He could not delay any longer. If he delayed any longer, he would have to face the tribulation at Kunlun. This was a huge problem for him. Furthermore, it was impossible to bring the great Tao to final perfection and obtain the recognition of the heavens and earth in Kunlun. This way, he would not be able to become a celestial immortal. At the peak of the ninth summit, is it time for you to go out and train? As soon as he went up, Zhang Lan heard his master's voice. Then, he said respectfully, Yes, master. I should be going out in the next two days. Chapter 384 Kissing Senior Sister, Looks Like You're Ready? Mo Jangdong looked at Zhang Lan as he spoke. Zhang Lan was going out to train in a few days, so he naturally had to ask more. Going out to train before becoming an immortal was very important and dangerous. N. Zhang Lan nodded. All set. He had indeed prepared many things, and his proficiency in spell techniques had increased significantly. All kinds of medicinal pills, all kinds of dharma treasures, all kinds of talismans, no matter what it was, as long as it could save his life, he had prepared them. Of course, there were also items that could shield him from being pried upon. This way, he would be able to leave Kunlun with peace of mind. Once he left Kunlun, he would be able to use his one-leaf vision to prevent others from prying into his secrets. After that, he would head to the area where he would go into seclusion. He would not go to the central plains. The direction of the northern wastelands belonged to the demon race. He would also try his best not to go there. He could go toward the direction of the southern wastelands. However, since he was not leaving the western wastelands, theoretically, any direction was fine. But for safety reasons, he should still choose to head either south or west. Take this with you. Mo Jangdong took out a metal bead. Zhang Lan looked at the pearl and felt a little strange. There seemed to be many cracks on the pearl. At this moment, light flashed across the metal bead. Then, the crack seemed to become the mark of a flower petal, and the bead began to bloom. Like a lotus flower. Heavenly Tribulation Golden Lotus. Mo Jangdong moved his hand and gathered the golden lotus together, turning it back into a metal bead. This golden lotus was left behind by the Kunlun Patriarch. The nine summits of Kunlun each have one. My bead can still be used once. If the heavenly tribulation is to descend earlier than planned and you can't overcome it, then you can use this golden lotus. It can help you survive this tribulation. Mo Jangdong handed the golden lotus to Zhang Lan. Many thanks, master. Zhang Lan accepted the bead. He would return it to his master when the time came. It felt like it was an item meant for summit leaders. Even though he was one of the disciples most suited to compete for the summit leader position, it was not time yet. He was not in a hurry to take something that only summit leaders should have. When the time came, his master would naturally give everything to him and retire. Go. Remember to bid farewell to the goddess, Mo Jangdong said. Zhang Lan naturally agreed. However, when he was about to leave, his master stopped him again. He added. Remind the goddess not to make a fuss about you leaving. Zhang Lan didn't understand, but he still nodded. After walking down the ninth summit, he thought of a possibility. His master was willing to let him out but this did not mean that the other summit leaders were willing to let him out. One had to understand that his tribulation was imminent, and he was about to get married. Going out was not a wise choice, his master had to bear a lot of pressure. It seems that it will be difficult to get out after being discovered. Zhang Lan had an answer, he went to the courtyard and took care of it. Then, he went to the square to clean the leaves. Some array formations were also activated by him to prevent any accidents. Although his master was here, there was no need to trouble him with some minor problems. The netherworld's entrance was about to erupt again. 
The surrounding array formations outside the Netherworld cave were all activated. Other than his master and Xiao Yu, it was not easy for anyone else to enter. After spending a day, Zhang Lan managed to tidy up the entire Ninth Summit. This way, he could go out in peace, it was morning. Zhang Lan had condensed and gathered his dragon slaying sword sword intent for his senior sister for the entire night. After watering the vegetative egg with spiritual liquid, he rode his sword towards the jade pool. The snow was still falling, and everywhere was snow white. When he arrived near the jade pool, Zhang Lan waited for his senior sister to come out. After a while, a young girl flew out. Junior brother, are you bringing me to see the snow? Xiao Yu stood on Zhang Lan's sword. She looked happy. There was nothing much for her to be happy about. It was just because she saw her junior brother. Senior sister wants to continue building snowmen? Zhang Lan asked. After saying that, he let the flying sword descend. Below them was a forest with a river. Because they were close to the jade pool, no one would come here. After landing, Zhang Lan asked Xiao Yu for the wooden sword. Junior brother is going out. Xiao Yu handed the wooden sword to Zhang Lan. She naturally knew that Zhang Lan would find time to go out and train. Since he wanted the wooden sword from her, it was definitely because he was planning to head out. N, I should be leaving today. Zhang Lan took the wooden sword and said. Then I'll give this to you, junior brother. Xiao Yu took out another sword. It was her sword, the autumn sword. The last time he went out, she had also lent it to Zhang Lan. Naturally, she would lend it to him again this time. Zhang Lan received the cold autumn sword and put it away. He then began to embed his sword and tent into the wooden sword. Because he had condensed the sword and tent the previous night, the enhancement this time was very fast. And the effects would also last a longer time. When will junior brother return? Xiao Yu asked. It should take a few years, Zhang Lan replied. They came to the base of a large tree. The place had not been covered in snow. There was a meadow. They sat on the grass and chatted. Junior brother, it's impolite not to look at others when you speak. Xiao Yu stood up and pointed at Zhang Lan. At this moment, the wooden sword had already been enhanced. Zhang Lan handed the sword to Xiao Yu. Then, he stood up. Is it time to go out? Xiao Yu asked Zhang Lan. Zhang Lan nodded without a word. Then remember to bring me a candied fruit. Xiao Yu put the wooden sword away, intent on completing the transaction. She hugged her junior brother, but before she could finish, Zhang Lan interrupted her. Senior sister, do you still remember about the shoe? You have still yet to pay the price. Xiao Yu looked down at her favorite shoes and said. I remember. What do you want? N, I've thought about it. Zhang Lan nodded. Then senior sister, close your eyes. Close my eyes again. Xiao Yu pouted before covering her forehead with her hand. This way, she wouldn't have to worry about her junior brother flicking her forehead. However, just as Xiao Yu was covering her forehead, she suddenly felt her junior brother leaning over. Then something seemed to touch her lips. This sudden change shocked Xiao Yu and made her open her eyes subconsciously. What she saw was naturally her junior brother's lips which had just touched hers. In an instant, Xiao Yu's eyes narrowed. Dragon scales began to appear on her face, and dragon horns also appeared. Her hands began to transform into her half-dragon form. She nearly turned to her dragon form entirely. Xiao Yu took a small step back. She looked at her transformation helplessly and immediately rode her sword towards the jade pool. I'm going back. Remember to tell me when you're back. Xiao Yu, who had left, sent a message over and disappeared in the direction of the jade pool. Her voice sounded flustered. Zhang Lan watched as Xiao Yu disappeared. She would transform into a dragon after a kiss. It seemed that the house was in great danger after they married. After thinking for a while, Zhang Lan felt that the current house might need to be modified. I forgot master's instructions. He suddenly remembered that his master told him not to tell Xiao Yu that he was going out to train. Finally, he shook his head and walked out of Kunlun. Along the way, he swiped his finger across his cheek and looked at it as he muttered softly. It's quite hot. His senior sister was indeed very pretty. Even if she was in her half-dragon form, the patterns on her cheeks were also seen. Without further thought, Zhang Lan left Kunlun. Chapter 385 Escaping Marriage? Ao Longyu returned to the Jade Pool and hid in its depths. 
Only then did she calm down and slowly return to normal. There was an unconcealable shyness in her eyes. Junior brother is too evil. Ao Longyu breathed heavily. Bubbles bubbled out. She touched her lips. Although she was surprised, nervous and flustered. But, she did not hate her junior brother's action. It was just too sudden. She wasn't prepared for it and her heart had tightened too much. How embarrassing. When she returned to normal, Ao Longyu slowly floated out of the jade pool. She touched her face to make sure it wasn't red before walking out of the jade pool. She looked in the direction of the Kunlun gate. Her junior brother should have left Kunlun by now. It would probably take him a few years to return. Senior sister. A voice suddenly appeared in her mind. It was junior sister Shaw. Without hesitation, Ao Longyu opened the path and let Lin Shaw in. After a while, Lin Sha arrived at the Jade Pool Mountain. Senior sister, are you alright? Lin Sha looked at Ao Longyu in confusion. I feel like something is wrong. No, Ao Longyu shook her head, her voice calm. By the way, senior sister, if you hug junior brother and he doesn't react, I think we can do something else, said Lin Sha. She learned something else. What can I do? Ao Longyu asked. She knew very little about these things. Many of them were taught by junior sister Shaw. Sometimes, it worked. Her junior brother would be entranced by her and be happy. Although her junior brother did not laugh, but she could tell that he was happy. I happened to see a scene on the road today. I think it's especially suitable for senior sister. Lin Shaw seemed to be eager to share. At this moment, Lin Shaw was also at the edge of immortality. After a few more years, she would begin her advancement. What is it? Ao Longyu was also curious. From junior sister Sha's expression, she knew that what she had seen was definitely not normal. It's like this. When I went out today, I saw a pair of junior brother and sister playing a game. Lin Sha looked at Ao Longyu and continued. That junior sister told the junior sister to close her eyes. Then, does senior sister know what happened next? The junior brother actually leaned over and kissed his junior sister. When I saw this scene, I was shocked. Senior sister can also imitate him. When the time comes. Senior sister. What has happened to your face? Ao Longyu immediately recalled what had just happened. She blushed again. No, I'm fine. Outside Kunlun. In front of the old inn. Zhang Lan stopped and greeted the eighth prince. Otherwise, he would most likely start asking around if he went to the ninth summit to find him and couldn't find him. People would then find out that he might have gone out. At this moment, the inn was deserted as usual. Eighth Prince? Entering the inn, Zhang Lan discovered that there was only the Eighth Prince at the counter. Brother-in-law? There's no good wine now. The youth and the others are going to the Central Plains today to look for the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race. The Eighth Prince felt helpless. I don't know if they'll be able to come back after this trip. If they can't come back, I guess I'll have to inherit this inn. They have already left? Zhang Lan asked. The youth had gone to the Central Plains to look for the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race. With the innkeeper accompanying him, there should be no problem. The innkeeper's strength was not the slightest bit weaker than the summit leader's. Furthermore, his life-saving ability was definitely stronger than everyone else's. Zhang Lan had a deep understanding of the power of catoptric deflection. Of course, this didn't mean that the others were weak. It was just that Zhang Lan hadn't seen how powerful the others were. It was just a guess. If it was him, he would not let his guard down no matter who he faced. He had to treat every enemy as a formidable enemy and not underestimate them in the slightest. I don't think so. They should be leaving in the afternoon. The youth is cleaning up. The boss is out. By the way, brother-in-law. Eighth Prince looked around and said. What's the use of that name? He was referring to the title of the Fist God. Zhang Lan understood that the Central Plains was dangerous. The Eighth Prince wanted to give the youth something to protect his life with. You can let him try. Zhang Lan spoke. A moment later. Zhang Lan walked out of the inn. After informing the Eighth Prince, there shouldn't be any more problems. Not daring to linger, he rode his sword and left. It was not that he was afraid of spies, but he was worried that the summit leaders would find out. This would allow them to consider this matter carefully. On the surface, his cultivation was close to transcending the tribulation. This was no longer about the Ninth Summit, but about Kunlun. However, before he left on his sword, 
he felt someone looking at him from behind. No malice. He turned his head and saw that it was senior brother Bei Fang. Had he been discovered? At this moment, Bei Fang only nodded toward him and did not stay. He must have passed by. Zhang Lan heaved a sigh of relief and left Kunlun. He was heading west. Among the four directions, the central plains was the most dangerous, followed by the northern wastelands. He wasn't sure of the southern wastelands, heading towards the direction of the Ba country was the safest. Especially when the Ba country had obtained the deity position and would not go out easily. As long as he did not go near Ba country, there would not be any danger. And if he got too close, the distance was extremely far so it was impossible for him to travel close to the Ba country within a short period of time. There was no problem. Furthermore, heading west did not mean that he would reach Ba country. As long as he did not move in the exact direction of Ba country, he would not enter Ba country even if he reached the end of the western wastelands. Once he was far away from Kunlun, Zhang Lan activated his one leaf vision and used his nine steps of heavenly travel. He needed to figure out some things. That was whether he was the same as those who obtained the deity position and would be restricted by the region. Imperial Lord Shi he was restricted in Kunlun, and Imperial Lord Yudu was restricted in Ba country. The others were the same. Only he did not feel this way. Therefore, he needed to confirm it. Kunlun Main Hall. Senior brother, it's the second time. Miao Yu looked at Mo Zhengdong in the corner with a serious expression. If you really can't take it, can't we just bring him back? Zhu Zhongtian said while drinking. Do you know which direction Zhang Lan went? Lu Jing asked. I made a simple calculation. There is something on Zhang Lan's body that hides the heavenly mysteries, Zhu Qing said. Even senior sister Chen Shi has praised Zhang Lan's array formation's ability to hide secrets from the heavens. It is definitely difficult for us to divine anything about him, Miao Yu said. Speaking of which, this kid should have a goal in everything he does. With his personality, if there is nothing important to do, it is impossible for him to go out and train at this time. If he has the option to stay in the Ninth Summit, he would definitely not leave the Ninth Summit. Now that he is going out to train before his wedding, Miao Yu looked at Zhu Qing and suddenly smiled. What does this behavior look like? Zhu Qing immediately stood up when Miao Yu suddenly mentioned it. Senior sister, are you saying that he wants to escape from the marriage? Her sudden words shocked everyone. Even Mo Jangdong looked over. Although it felt very similar, he didn't believe it. Of course not. I just wanted to make senior brother nervous. Next time, at least discuss it with us, Miao Yu said. Everyone heaved a sigh of relief. Since he's not running away from the marriage, why did Zhang Lan run out to train at this time? Zhu Qing sat down again. Chapter 386 His deity position is indeed different. Isn't it just a simple training? Why are you so thoughtful? Zhu Zhongtian asked curiously. The reason why so many people from the 8th summit went out to gain experience was purely because they wanted to gain experience. It was not like there was no one who went out to train before one's tribulation transcendence. It wasn't anything strange. The others are indeed fine, but to Zhang Lan, this is an abnormal matter. There is no need to be too serious either, I am just guessing. Miao Yu smiled and said. Going out before his tribulation transcendence can only mean two things, both of which are related to his cultivation advancement. The first case is that he knows that he will not be able to transcend the tribulation so easily and hence decided to seek a breakthrough outside by searching for fortuitous opportunities. The second case is that something is wrong with his heavenly tribulation. As for other personal matters, there's nothing to worry about. Then could it be a fear of marriage? Could he have gone out to calm down? Zhu Qing asked. If I guessed correctly, there is actually a chance that Zhang Lan might not be coming back. Miao Yu sat on her seat, her voice carrying a light smile. However, the possibility is very low. It might not even be there. Well, the most impossible answer might possibly be the most correct answer. Junior sister, don't create any problems, said Second Summit's Lu Jing. He wanted to ask his junior sister to stop scaring them. As the wedding approached, no one wanted any problems. Then, Lu Jing looked at Mo Zhengdong and said, You should discuss it with us next time. If you want to let him go, we can't stop you either. Once he returns, he will get married. Is there even a next time? Zhu Zhongtian asked curiously. Everyone. Get ready. 
The most important thing in recent years should be the goddess wedding, said Lu Jing. The others naturally had no problems. They were here today to criticize Mo Zhangdong. He had allowed his disciple to do as he pleased. Currently, Zhang Lan was key to the entire Kunlun. Any problems to him would have a huge impact on Kunlun. A month later, the sky was clear. Zhang Lan rode his sword in midair. He walked through many places and moved with his early stage heaven immortal cultivation. He was using his nine steps of heavenly travel, he never stopped. At this moment, he was already very far away from Kunlun. Looks like I am indeed not bound by the geographical restriction. I'm indeed different from the others. Zhang Lan muttered to himself. So far, he did not know why he was like this, he was not strong enough to understand. He could only put it aside for now. When he was strong enough, he could directly ask Imperial Lord Shihi. After all, it was possible that the other party knew. As for the others, it should be hard for them to know. At least for now. I have to choose a place with fewer people to enter seclusion. Without thinking too much about the deity position, Zhang Lan began to head to the place where he had prepared for seclusion all these years. It was a place filled with barren rocks. It was said that the place was filled with boulders and ferocious beasts wreaking havoc. From time to time, fog would appear. Once covered by the fog, it was easy to get lost in the stone forest. It was extremely difficult for one to get out of it once trapped. In conclusion, it was a dangerous place. Aside from being dangerous, there were also no natural treasures in it. So, very few immortals went there. Hence, this place was very suitable for long periods of seclusion without being affected by others. Also, as there were few people in the desolate stone forest, if danger approached, he wouldn't be so restricted. Unless the desolate stone forest itself was too dangerous. Otherwise, he would not give up. However, he would only be able to determine the specifics once he arrived there. This journey would take six months, it was very far. Furthermore, this was the time he needed after traveling at maximum speed. Fortunately, as he did not need to spend too much of his concentration on riding on his sword, he could read some books at the same time. This way, he would not waste too much time. Occasionally, he would be able to see the mountains and rivers, and feel the power of the earth. He could also try to gain some insights from them. Along the way, he wanted to take a route with fewer people, but he wanted to see if the natural disaster was real. Hence, he would occasionally fly past human cities. He would only fly past the edge of the cities, it would not affect the people inside. At the very least, it wouldn't be viewed as an offense by some experts, so he was still safe. After wandering around a few cities, he realized that there weren't many natural disasters. Was what Joe Bai said untrue? Or could it be that the other party had just encountered frequent natural disasters in a certain area, which gave others the illusion that natural disasters and man made disasters were more frequent? It's not impossible, Zhang Lan thought. Of course, it could also be because this place was closer to Kunlun. So it wasn't a big deal. Zhang Lan didn't think too much about it and continued towards desolate stone forest. The journey after that was rather dangerous and there were very few ordinary people. There shouldn't be many traces of immortals as well. At the mid-stage heavenly immortal realm, he was no longer considered weak either. But there were countless powerhouses in the vast wilderness, he could not determine his safety with probability. Even if there was a 90% chance that he wouldn't meet others, he had to be wary of that 10%. Six months later, Zhang Lan stopped riding his sword. At this moment, he was standing in front of the desolate stone forest. It's vast and boundless, with thin spirit chi. The environment is rather harsh. There were many boulders, but there were no signs of array formations. There are no runes on the huge rock, it doesn't look like it contains profound mysteries. Thinking like this, Zhang Lan waved his hand, and the autumn sword appeared in his hand. Following that, a sword slashed down as sword intent wreaked havoc. He slashed at a boulder. Boom! The boulder was split in half on the spot. When Zhang Lan saw this, he walked to the edge of the giant rock and carefully observed it. He realized that it was indeed just an ordinary boulder. Although I don't know the reason for its formation, there are indeed no hidden secrets. Since this is so, this place is rather suitable. If there were secrets hidden inside the forest, there would be danger accompanying it as well. This was especially true for some of the boulders, which were usually hidden in mysterious places. 
people often came for the expected treasures and secrets. This way, he might be discovered and cause trouble. Therefore, he needed to confirm it. If there were really secrets hidden here, he would turn around and leave. Currently, he did not lack anything. There was no need to take risks for an unknown opportunity. An opportunity that no one had obtained in countless years represented danger. Fortunately, this was not the case. Later, Zhang Lan walked in. He observed his surroundings and saw some ferocious beasts, they were very strong. There were even beasts with a true immortal cultivation among them. In some strange regions, there were even some celestial immortals. Zhang Lan naturally kept a respectful distance from these areas. Before long, he arrived at a vast region where immortals could not be seen. There was a lot of gravel here. There were naturally some large rocks as well. It was convenient for him to set up array formations here. After spending a month, Zhang Lan set up many suitable array formations and even concealed this area. Most of them were concealment array formations. The maze array formation used the surrounding boulders to make this place look like a natural maze. This way, it would not be easy to be targeted. As for him, he hid under the ground. There were also huge rocks extending from under the ground. For the sake of safety, Zhang Lan did a thorough search and found nothing special. Then, he entered seclusion. This time, his main goal was still to perfect his Tao and obtain the acknowledgement of the heavens and earth. Only then could he smoothly enter the celestial immortal realm. Then, he only needed to wait for his golden body to reach perfection. Once his Tao reached perfection, obtaining acknowledgement was a certain process, it might take a long time. Therefore, his plan was to return in about 10 years. He hoped that 10 years was enough time. If it was not enough, he could not be impatient either. A perfected great Tao was extremely important, nothing could go wrong. If anything went wrong, it would only waste more time. Chapter 387 Acknowledgement of the Great Tao Desolate Stone Forest The North Section A group of stone demons appeared from underground, entering the stone forest. The stones in the north have started to decrease. Let's go to the east. This way, no one will know that the stones here have been moved away by us demons. The stone demon said. Shi Yan was the person in charge of moving the stones. They have been ordered to act. It's been many years, when will it end? Suddenly, a stone demon complained. The war is over, but we are getting busier. I thought that after the war ended, there would be no need for us to be so busy, said the other stone demon. All right, cut it out. Hurry up and finish moving this year's amount. It's also helpful to our cultivation. Shi Yan spoke. Previously, we only needed to move stones for 30 years every hundred years. Now, it's been more than 50 years. My cultivation level has increased a little. However, I feel that I might as well go to the battlefield and fight. After complaining, they started working. Don't make any noise when you go over. Be careful. Investigate before moving it. Do not approach areas with existences above the immortal realm. This way, there will be no danger to your lives, Shi Yan said. The others naturally had no objections. There were countless ferocious beasts here. No one knew what they would encounter. It was always right to be careful. If a fog appears, remember not to walk around casually. The fog will bring about some changes. You can safely dissolve it by standing still. Shi Yan repeated the words he said every time he came here. They had been here for a long time. However, the north was quite far from the east, and it would take some time to reach it. Standing on the spot could prevent the fog from harming them. They had experimented with it using people. Only by doing so would there be fewer casualties. Zhang Lan closed his eyes to cultivate. However, he had left a sliver of his attention placed on his array formations. If anyone approached him and stayed for a long time, he would know. At this moment, he had arrived in the world of Tao. Color appeared in the sky but it was night. After experiencing it properly, Zhang Lan made preparations. Then, he made his first step. His heart was as calm as a mirror. He seemed to have thought of the path beneath his feet countless times, and the path in front of him was already clear to him. There would not be any accidents on this trip. He would be recognized by the heavens and earth in one try. This was what he felt. At this moment, he walked out step by step. A red sun appeared in the sky. It was the birth of the Great Tao. Zhang Lan walked towards it. At the same time, it was also heading towards Zhang Lan. His feet moved steadily. 
The grass and trees were just beginning to grow and were full of vitality. When Zhang Lan arrived in front of the mountains and rivers, the red sun rose into the sky. The light shone on Zhang Lan's body. At this time, Dao descended, appearing on Zhang Lan's body. It resonated with everything in the sky. After everything was acknowledged, the light began to disperse. The scorching sun was still high in the sky. Zhang Lan then stepped forward. Flowers and trees gradually appeared beneath his feet. Not long after, the leaves began to turn yellow. The leaves began to fall. Zhang Lan didn't stop. He continued walking forward. At this moment, the wind began to blow and snow began to fall. In just a short moment, Zhang Lan arrived at the snow-covered land. There was snow all around him, and he turned around to take a look. The sun was already setting. Night began to fall. And he had reached the withering winter. He walked towards the sun at the beginning of the day, towards spring and winter. He walked through day and night, walked through the four seasons, and walked through life. At this moment, Zhang Lan looked at himself and discovered that he had already aged and withered. It was as if his life had come to an end. At this moment, the sun had set and winter had ended. His life had also seemed to reach its end. Zhang Lan felt the passage of time, the night, the cold winter and finally, death. However, the moment everything ended, the Tao world emitted a beam of light. Light surged in all directions, soaring into the sky. At the same time, thunder rumbled above the desolate stone forest. The traces of the great Tao appeared. Light descended from the sky, followed by the aura of the great Tao. It seemed to be approving, admiring, and sighing at the same time at Zhang Lan's Tao. In Zhang Lan's Tao, there was the beginning and end of life, the cycle of day and night, and the change of four seasons. It was earth-shattering. This great Tao light lasted for two hours. In the end, it vanished into thin air. As for the stone demons that were moving stones, they could sense the changes, but they were too far away to see clearly. That feeling just now was a little scary. I wonder if the fog has appeared. A few weaker stone demons began to converse. I don't know, but with the appearance of the fog, I heard that there will be quite a bit of danger. In short, we have to be careful, we shouldn't get too close to that area in the next two years. A cowardly stone demon felt that they couldn't go over. Yes, but it's been a few years, is this batch still not over? Yeah, let's wait a few more years, it might be enough. Speaking of which, there seems to be some fog. Fog? Wasn't everything fine just now? The two stone demons that were moving the rocks suddenly froze. Then they heard a roar. Stop. Stop. Don't move. However, the two stone demons' voices became softer and softer before they completely fell silent. Shi Yan looked ahead and did not dare to move. He watched as the two stone demons were swallowed by the fog. He was now very worried that he would be swallowed up as well, even though he would be fine if he stood still. But there was something else in the fog. It could also bring danger. After waiting for a moment, the fog dissipated. As expected, the original position was no longer occupied by the stone demon. Let's continue. Shi Yan spoke. The others naturally did not say anything. Central Plains. Mount Wutong. The youth looked at the surging power outside. It felt dangerous here. Sooner or later, the heavenly feather phoenix race and the heavenly human race would fall from grace after fighting so much. He sat at the foot of the hill waiting for Hong Ya. Today, Hong Ya went up the mountain again. He felt that he could bring Hong Ya to the inn. But Hong Ya couldn't leave now. He could only wait for a while. His grandpa seemed to have something to do too and did not stay to accompany him. With this thought in mind, the youth sat cross-legged and began cultivating. He would strive to defeat his grandpa as soon as possible, or bring his big brother into the spiritual inn. This way, he could do whatever he wanted. Hong Ya should be able to like him too. After cultivating for a few days, the youth opened his eyes. He looked down and saw a few people moving about in the distance. But they soon disappeared. Strange, I feel that something is amiss. Did they come down from the mountain? The youth frowned. There must be a reason behind the abnormality. This was what the eight prince said his big brother had taught him. He had to be vigilant about everything suspicious and confirm the situation of important matters. With this thought in mind, the youth headed straight up the mountain. He planned to ask Hong Ya if she was all right, but when he went up to ask, he was stunned. 
Is what you said true? Hong Ya has gone down the mountain? Asked the youth immediately. Hong Ya has indeed gone down the mountain. Didn't you see her? Asked a girl guarding the mountain. No when did she leave the mountain? Actually, it's normal that you didn't. You were cultivating when I came up. Hong Ya might have been afraid of disturbing you. No, that's impossible. No I mean, I'm sure I can sense it if Hong Ya walks past me. When did she leave the mountain? Not long ago. The girl looked at the young man curiously. The youth immediately came to a realization. It was the people from earlier. Chapter 388 Netherworld Halberd, on the 14th year he was out of Kunlun. Zhang Lan opened his eyes. He began to withdraw his power. At this moment, golden light blossomed from his body. His flesh, blood, meridians, and bones were all covered in golden light. His body was flawless from inside out. He had successfully tempered his golden body and reached the divine soul realm. As such, he stepped into the perfected heavenly immortal realm. Because of the acknowledgement of the heavenly Tao, my golden body showed signs of breaking through and it has also allowed me to enter the final level of soul tempering. Zhang Lan was rather surprised. It was also because of this that he spent a bit more time in seclusion. Otherwise, he could have left this place a few years ago. At that time, he had obtained the recognition of the heavenly Tao. He had perfected his Tao. However, he never expected the recognition of the Tao to cause an advancement in his cultivation realm. He managed to enter the perfected heaven immortal realm earlier than expected. But this perfection was different from the past. There was still his golden body which had yet to reach perfection. Only his cultivation had reached perfection. I feel that I am far weaker than that demon back then. It seems that the heaven immortal realm focuses more on the golden body. Zhang Lan looked at his hands and experienced his own strength. However, he felt that it was far inferior to Fei Yuan, whom he had encountered at Kunlun. Looks like that person should already have a perfected golden body. What he was lacking was probably just the recognition of the Tao. Zhang Lan understood. Many people would be trapped on gaining acknowledgement of the Tao. Although some people were also stuck in their progress of perfecting their golden body, the numbers were small. As long as one put in a lot of effort, most would be successful in cultivating a perfected golden body. Advancing to become a heaven immortal was equivalent to advancing a step further. There were indeed some dangers. On the other hand, finding one's Tao wasn't dangerous, yet it could only be chanced upon by luck. Some people were able to understand and discover their own Tao but there were some who would never be able to do so. Let alone reaching the level of being recognized by the heavenly Tao. It seems like my luck is pretty good. With enough effort, one could get lucky. Sometimes, even if luck came, if one did not work hard enough, they could only watch as the opportunity floats past. Opportunities were given only to those who were prepared. Therefore, he could not relax. As Zhang Lan was thinking about this, he suddenly felt someone approaching from outside. There had been some ferocious beasts that had approached him over the years, but they had not been able to enter his array formation. Why had they entered this time? Someone with high attainments in array formations? Zhang Lan was a little confused, but he soon felt that something else was interfering with his formation. Fog. Instantly, he thought of the fog that would appear in the desolate stone forest. The fog here was indeed a little strange, but if Zhang Lan didn't go up, he naturally wouldn't be affected. The fog was also a form of protection for him. He planned to wait for the people above to leave before going out. Then, he would return to Kunlun. He would then say that he had completed his tribulation transcendence. Next, he would just wait for the arrangements of the various summit leaders. Calculating the time since he had entered the sect, this year should be his 584th year. He was a bit faster in advancing to become an immortal as compared to a genius, but it wasn't too ridiculous. Human geniuses usually achieved immortality in about 600 years, there were actually very few who managed to break through before that. It required many opportunities and resources, they're coming in. Zhang Lan felt two people entering his array formation. Just above. Two demons. They both have a void refinement cultivation base. They were indeed not as strong as heaven immortals, but Zhang Lan remained vigilant. The unknown represented danger. He naturally had to take it seriously. What is this place? A voice sounded from above. At this moment, the two stone demons were looking around the rubble. Somewhat amazed. 
They were carrying boulders in their hands. After all, they had been working for years and they were used to this. Even when they came to an unknown place, they still did not let it go. I felt something pulling at us just now, but we suddenly stopped here. It looks like we fell into a fog and got lost, said the taller stone demon. I also feel like we've been walking in circles, the smaller stone demon said. Let's rest for a while. The tall stone demon tried to lower the boulder. Soon, they stood at the side and looked around helplessly. There weren't many boulders here, and there was quite a lot of gravel. But it was impossible to determine the direction. Let's take a break before we find a way back, the tall stone demon continued. Yes. The smaller stone demon nodded before asking curiously. Why are we carrying boulders day and night? I went near it last time. It should be a well. I don't know why it's so eerie. Later, I asked and heard, the taller stone demon looked around and carefully said. It might be used to communicate with the endless abyss, otherwise known as the netherworld. However, no one knows if it is true or not. Anyway, it's not something we small demons can know. We're just in charge of moving rocks. Zhang Lan lowered his eyebrows when he heard the voice above. He wasn't sure if the two above were intentionally telling him whatever they were saying. But, demons. Abyss. Netherworld. With all these added up, did this mean that the demons were trying to open the passageway to the netherworld? These two demons won't discover me. Under his eyes of truth, he could see through all disguises. So far, he hadn't seen any disguises from these two. If someone deliberately arranged it, they should have sensed my existence. However, there has been no feedback over the years from my one leaf vision. He didn't sense anything. The array formations also had no reactions. Then the possibility of them being deliberately arranged to come here is infinitely close to zero. Even if it was Imperial Lord Shi, he who was looking prying upon his location, he would still discover it and there were very few people who could surpass Imperial Lord Shihi. But he could not rule out the possibility too. But why would someone of this level need to scheme against him? After hesitating for a moment, Zhang Lan decided to investigate. The demons would definitely attack the entrance of the netherworld again. With this in mind, he began to make new preparations. He had already familiarized himself with all kinds of spell techniques, so there was naturally no problem. He also checked some of his Dharma treasures. There were those which were meant to help him escape, those which helped heal him, and those which temporarily increased his strength. He examined them carefully. Since he wanted to do it, he would go all out. Once he discovered that it was really directed at his ninth summit. Then, he would just disintegrate the danger. Unless. He was no match for the other party. If that was the case, he would not force himself. However, he would still take the necessary action. Then, he decided to sign in here first, he did not sign it here when he first arrived at this place. More than a decade had passed, so there should be a boost. Moreover, it was easy to get certain items in certain areas. If he received something that had something to do with the netherworld passage, then the appearance of those two must have been a coincidence. System, I will sign in here. Soon, a long-lost voice was heard. Ding. Signed in successfully. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the gift of the Great Tao. You have obtained the Dharma treasure, the Netherworld Halberd. Netherworld Halberd. It is formed in the depths of the Netherworld due to luck. It is formed through thousands of tribulations and is undefeated in all battles. Anyone that touches it will feel as if he has entered the Netherworld. Only those who do not fear inner demons can control it. Zhang Lan was surprised. Although the treasure he had gotten was nothing related to the passage, it had something directly related to the netherworld. In other words, the desolate stone forest here might be related to the netherworld. It seemed that building a deep well that connected to the netherworld here was not baseless. I have no choice but to go. It's just right. Let's see how powerful this netherworld halberd is. Before using it, he would naturally have to familiarize himself with it to prevent any accidents from happening. If he held no advantage using this halberd, he would just use the power of nine bulls. Chapter 389 Zhang Lan is useless. When he held the netherworld halberd in his hand, Zhang Lan felt as if his surroundings had been enveloped by the aura of the netherworld. His state of mind seemed to be shaking non-stop, the slightest carelessness would cause fluctuations in his mind. At that time, he would hear some voices coming from the endless abyss. Not only that, he also felt that if something went wrong, it might not be able to be reversed. 
Comparatively speaking, it's even more dangerous than the entrance to the netherworld. Zhang Lan looked at the netherworld halberd and felt that his surroundings were covered by the aura of the netherworld. Furthermore, it could unleash a tremendous amount of power. The calmer he was, the more powerful he was. Furthermore, it could affect an entire square area. Compared to the power of nine bulls, it should be inferior. But it should be very close to it. Especially when it comes with its area of attack ability. After experiencing it for a while, he understood. The netherworld halberd was completely pitch black, and it emanated a strand of coldness that struck fear into the hearts of all. It was indeed dangerous. There was no need to hold it. Just by approaching it, one could easily have inner demons breeding in one's hearts. This didn't have any effect on him, but it affected the surrounding people greatly, not differentiating between friend and foe. Looks like it can only be used when I'm fighting alone. But, he had no one to fight alongside him either. He had worked with Lu Jian and the others before. However, there shouldn't be anyone who fought alongside him permanently. He had always acted alone. With his one leaf vision, he had no friends. At most, only the eighth prince was more familiar with him and could be considered a semi partner. However, the eighth prince was very afraid of him. He was also very tactful. In the entire Kunlun, he did not know many people, and those he was familiar with were even fewer. He had only interacted with the eighth prince and the youth a little more, and then there was Lu Jian and the others. There was also Jing Ting and the others. They should have become immortals too else, they should all be at the entrance to immortality. With this thought in mind, Zhang Lan packed up his things and left the underground. He did not alert the two people above. These two people had no value and it would be a waste of his time to interrogate them. He wanted to see if there was anyone else nearby. This way, they would know where their headquarters was. He would then investigate it. The next afternoon, Zhang Lan appeared in the northern part of the desolate stone forest. There were a few stone demons moving boulders here. This way, he could follow where these people went to find the others' whereabouts. Most of them are demons with void refinement or essence soul cultivation. They are not weak. I wonder what realm the strongest will be in. With this question in mind, Zhang Lan followed the stone demons to an underground tunnel at the northern border. It was a rather vast underground space. There were many array formations and some supporting stone pillars. Everyone, be careful. Shi Yan, who was at the front, spoke. He directed the stone demons to enter the lower levels. Zhang Lan saw him from behind and knew at a glance that he was the demon in charge of moving the huge rocks. He is the strongest among all the demons and is in the human immortal realm. It seems that he should know the most. He intended to ask the other party some questions. However, he had to find a good place to avoid alerting the enemy. Soon, Zhang Lan arrived at the corner. After there were no problems, he decided to take action. However, when he arrived behind Xi Yan, he immediately retracted his hand. Then, he retreated to the side and circulated his one-leaf vision crazily. At this moment, two demons walked around the corner. A man with black hair and feathered clothes, and a woman with black hair and white clothes. Lord Fei Yuan, Lord Qing Yu. Xi Yan immediately bowed respectfully. Fei Yuan and Qing Yu ignored Shi Yan and continued walking forwards. The netherworld entrance should have erupted once again. Unfortunately, we don't have a better way to open the passageway this time. After a few more years, there would probably be one. However, I don't think the success rate is high. The easiest way to succeed is to infiltrate from the inside, said Fei Yuan. From the inside? Qing Yu curiously looked at Fei Yuan, as if she wanted to know how to enter. There's a disciple on the ninth summit named Zhang Lan. He is Mo Jangdong's most valued disciple. He is also someone that Kunlun values. He is extremely important to Kunlun. He is also the most appropriate person to approach the netherworld's entrance. If he can join us, it's not impossible to completely open the entrance to the netherworld, said Fei Yuan with a smile. It was as if as long as he obtained Zhang Lan, he could change the current situation. Zhang Lan? Qing Yu was rather curious. Lord Fei Yuan should have seen this person before, right? It is said that he is the only disciple of the Ninth Summit, and he is also the fiancé of the Princess of the Dragon Race, who is also the Kunlun Goddess at the same time. How is he? His talent is average, but it's difficult for him to become an immortal. However, Kunlun would definitely make him an immortal. 
they are willing to pay any price. After all, he has to marry the Kunlun's goddess. This is also where his value lies. But it's just that this price might be too high. It is easy for him to become a puppet, unless he is extremely talented. Otherwise, he would still be a pawn of Kunlun. Fei Yuan shook his head and said. Overall, he's quite lucky, but he's a rather ordinary person. He has a good temperament and is more or less open-minded. I tried to win him over once, but the other party was not moved. It was quite a pity. Comparatively speaking, he's not too bad. However, in terms of strength, he's just average. Does that mean he's useless? Ching Yu tried to ask. Haha, that's not true either. Fei Yuan smiled and said. We can't belittle him on purpose, but he really can't enter our eyes. A void refinement mighty figure is only here to carry rocks. His value lies in his identity. If it's possible, I'm still willing to rope him in, even if he's weak. He's at the void refinement realm. It looks like Kunlun won't be able to release him. Ching Yu raised her slender hand and squeezed it lightly. If I pinch him, he might shatter. Naturally, he needs to be protected. He will probably remain as a puppet in Kunlun for the rest of his life. If that's the case, we can't do anything either. We can't win him over. Let's wait a little longer. There might be a chance. Right now, it is better to first solidify the newly refined Dharma treasure. This stone forest is truly formidable. Perhaps there are more secrets hidden within. As long as we discover something, there's no need to open the netherworld's passageway through Kunlun, said Fei Yuan. At this moment, the two of them had already disappeared around the bend. Zhang Lan stood still and listened quietly, waiting for the two to leave. Fei Yuan, a perfected golden body expert, very powerful. Logically speaking, even if he used the power of nine tribulations, he might not necessarily win. Ching Yu was a peak heaven immortal who had yet to achieve perfection in the cultivation of her golden body. She's at the same level as me, but I don't know if she has a secret technique or a pill that can temporarily raise her cultivation base. He also needed to be on guard. For now, it was impossible to determine how many heaven immortals were inside. Or above if there were existences above the heaven immortal realm. Zhang Lan's limit was a perfected golden body realm expert. If there was a celestial immortal, the other party was definitely not something he could match. Once he discovered such an existence, he had to leave. He would come again the next time. Or he could just tell his master and see if they wanted to deal with it. His master could not leave Kunlun, but others could. It seems like I need to find a way to make some noise and see how many experts there are. Subsequently, Zhang Lan took out a wisp of Ba Country's ghost chi. The friendship of Ba Country is still useful. I shall let the hell gates open here then. Chapter 390 Hunting Heaven Immortals Zhang Lan, who had the Ba Country's friendship, could activate the trespassing of otherworldly soldiers once. This was given to him personally by the Ba Country's ghost Chi. He had thought that it would be useless, but who would have thought that it would be useful for him today? It was so coincidental that some might think that Ba Country was behind it. Ba Country was not on good terms with the demons. Using their technique against the demons wasn't that bad. And he wanted to use the chaos to find if there were any hidden experts. If there were no existences above the heaven immortal realm, he could try to take them down one by one. If there was, he would leave this place. He would head back to Kunlun, and tell his master about this. It was just that it would be quite hard for him to explain about the trespassing of otherworldly soldiers. But he could try thinking of another way. Before activating the trespassing of otherworldly soldiers, Zhang Lan wanted to take a look at the general structure of this place and figure out the important areas here. This was the only way to determine if there were any experts. Powerful individuals were usually stationed at the core. So, should I follow behind Fei Yuan or follow the direction of where the boulders are going? After hesitating for a moment, Zhang Lan decided to follow the direction of where the boulders went. The two of them were probably heading to the same place. One should have taken a shortcut while the other needed to take the main road. After all, transportation was more troublesome. The path would definitely be larger, making it easier to pass through. Soon, Zhang Lan followed the boulders to the next floor. He discovered that there was a huge cave here, and beneath the cave was an array formation. There were also places meant for the storage of the boulders. After the boulder was broken down, it would flow deeper. It seemed like he had to take a look. He looked around. 
There were people guarding the place. However, he did not encounter any heavenly immortal level experts. Soon, Zhang Lan arrived at the lava flow. As long as he did not use his cultivation, he would not be discovered easily. Of course, he did not dare to be too casual. He still needed to be vigilant. Otherwise, he might not be able to leave. In a few breaths' time, Zhang Lan reached a deeper cavern. Just as he reached the entrance, he saw that Fei Yuan and Qing Yu were there too. Then, he saw that not far away, there was a passage leading up. Looks like these two people really came straight down from above, Zhang Lan thought. Then, he began to observe the cave. As far as the eye could see, there were circles of magma that gathered at the very center. Arrays appeared everywhere. Countless array formations began to fuse into it, as if they were forging some incredible Dharma treasure. It's very similar to the well I saw previously. Zhang Lan thought to himself. Then, he looked around and realized that there was an array formation protecting this place. He could not enter immediately. Otherwise, he could try a sneak attack. Zhang Lan retreated to the shortcut tunnel and returned to the open space at the top. After some thought, he walked around to confirm his surroundings. After spending some time, he did not discover anything else. There seemed to be only two perfected heaven immortals here. However, the experts might be hidden. Hence, he decided to first activate the trespassing of otherworldly soldiers technique first. After a while, Zhang Lan stood at the northern part of the desolate stone forest. He found a relatively remote area and set up an isolation array formation to directly open the hell gates. Hu. Ghost Qi began to appear. The gates of Ba country opened. The huge door was quickly condensing. It was much faster than the one he met back then, as if the two were not operating on the same principle. It was very likely that it was because the other party had opened it in Kunlun and hence decided to slowly condense the gates. If not, they would be easily discovered. After some time, the grand door appeared. Crack. The door opened. Zhang Lan jumped back and flew into the air, observing from a high vantage point. He had a feeling that he could command the ghost cultivators of Ba country. At this moment, countless ghost cultivators walked out of the gate. At this moment, Zhang Lan was shocked to discover that there was no end to these ghost cultivators. It was completely beyond his expectations, although they were not that strong and there were no heaven immortals amongst them. However, they were basically all true immortals and human immortals. This, the friendship of Ba country is very sincere. He could feel the sincerity of Ba country, for a moment. He actually felt like he had wasted this chance. Of course, it was just a momentary feeling. As long as it was useful to him, it was the best. It did not matter if it was too much firepower for a small matter. The most important thing was that it was not useless, it could also protect his safety. In the end, Zhang Lan waved his hand, sending the ghost soldiers underground. At this moment, the ghostly aura expanded as the otherworldly soldiers took the path. It was grand and majestic. Everywhere they passed, not a single blade of grass grew. The terrifying aura even made Zhang Lan feel a bit fearful. If they all attacked him, he would have to expend quite a bit of effort. With this, he should be able to lure out the hidden experts. If there were no experts, he would kill the heaven immortals one by one. And then ruin everything here. Although this would continue as long as the demon race was not destroyed, he still wanted to destroy it. After all, it was the ninth summit that was endangered. Since he had seen it, he could not ignore it, unless he was powerless. As he watched the army of ghost soldiers head towards the demons, Zhang Lan landed behind them and began to hide among the ghost soldiers with the netherworld halberd in hand. He did not intend to use it to kill the enemy. What he needed was to place it around the enemy and influence their movements. This way, he would have a higher chance of winning. The ghost cultivators who lacked intelligence seemed unaffected. In other words, the netherworld halberd might not be of much use against Ba country. It was not a big deal. Boom. A powerful force began to emanate from the underground entrance. It seemed like someone had discovered it. Why did Ba Country attack here? Quick, inform Lord Fei Yuan, someone immediately shouted. Zhang Lan didn't mind, instead continuing to follow the ghost cultivators. As long as the army entered, he would follow, he would then wait for an opportunity. To annihilate the perfected heaven immortal, and destroy everything here. Inside the cave. Fei Yuan frowned and looked outside. 
Someone has made it here. Who came here? Ching Yu asked. They had been here for a long time, and no one had come here before. Why were they here at this time? Furthermore, the other party had come with the intention to fight. Lord Fei Yuan, Lord Ching Yu, it's the trespassing of otherworldly soldiers. They're coming for us. Xi Yan immediately arrived. Both of them were surprised to hear this. Ba country? Fei Yuan was confused. Didn't they go back? Furthermore, this is the western wastelands, close to Kunlun. There is no reason for them to come here. Not to mention finding us and attacking us. Could they have found this place themselves? I don't think they are so smart. Furthermore, they have come so suddenly. Is it a natural trespassing of otherworldly soldiers? Ching Yu asked. There were two types of trespassing of otherworldly soldiers. The first type was that the otherworldly soldiers of Ba country would leave by themselves and return by themselves. However, this kind of thing rarely happened. We can't rule out the possibility that the Ba country is the one behind this. It won't be easy to find a way through such a long distance. It is highly unlikely they have done it the natural way. Someone must have done it secretly. But when did the people of Ba country become so smart? Fei Yuan frowned. He felt that something was amiss. I'll go out and take a look. If it really doesn't work out, I'll leave this place with the results, Ching Yu said. All right. Let me know if there's any problem, said Fei Yuan. Chapter 391 A Pinch of Mine Will Shatter You. Ching Yu arrived outside. At this moment, she realized that the ghost cultivators had already broken through the entrance and were really coming this way. The array was already activated and the people inside were also fighting against the ghost cultivators. However, there were too many ghost cultivators, and none of them were weak. They were either human immortals or true immortals. If they knew dharmic spells, they would have smashed this place to pieces. However, even without dharmic spells, the entrance had already been blasted open. If they were allowed to continue like this, the place would be destroyed sooner or later. At this moment, her power of a perfected heaven immortal began to appear as it swept out. Boom. Bang. The weaker ones were immediately defeated. They fell to the ground without being able to stand up again. Only some true immortals were able to hold on bitterly. The difference between a true immortal and a perfected human immortal was just too great. The power of a heaven immortal whose golden body was about to be perfected was not something that human immortals or true immortals could compare to. They were on completely different levels. Zhang Lan stood at the back, watching all of this. It seemed like this single person could eliminate quite a few ghost cultivators. Zhang Lan didn't try to force his way through. Instead, he had the ghost cultivators attack the ground from all directions, breaking through from all directions. Even if there was an array formation, it would still blast it open. It was fine even if he couldn't blast it open. He did not expect the ghost cultivators to achieve significant results, he just wanted to disturb them and see if there were any big sharks. From there, he would find their weakness and finish them off. The danger level of facing a perfected golden body heaven immortal was too high. It was best if no one else was around. So, he wanted to kill Ching Yu first. Ching Yu looked around and smiled. These people know how to attack in all directions. It seems like someone is controlling them. Furthermore, the people from Ba country would not do this. Ching Yu looked around and said. Could it be that someone had just obtained a door and opened it? Furthermore, he does not dare to come directly. It is likely that he is not strong enough. Since you are not strong enough, I advise you to leave. We demons will let bygones be bygones. Even though Ching Yu said this, she was still on full alert. One had to understand that she still hadn't found this person. In other words, the other party wasn't that weak. The other party was even somewhat dangerous. She had no idea what other plans the other party had. She did not want to die here because of a low-level mistake. However, just as she was on guard, she suddenly felt an attack coming from the side. Netherworld aura. Why was it so thick? Without any hesitation, Ching Yu began to dodge. Clang. The Netherworld halberd stabbed into the ground. Ching Yu was a bit startled by the aura this halberd brought, but she didn't dare to hesitate. The person didn't appear. At the same time, she felt a power appear behind her. A powerful attack came. Fatal danger. Without any hesitation, a pair of wings appeared behind Ching Yu's back. The wings erupted with power as a powerful defense appeared. Boom. 
Bang! A fist came, and in the blink of an eye, it broke the wing. The entire wing shattered into dust. The intense pain reached Ching Yu's body. She used this short period of time to counterattack. Power appeared in her hands. She flicked her finger toward the fist. Boom! Bang! Zhang Lan was knocked back a few steps. The other party's fingers twisted and broke. The figure retreated a little. Zhang Lan looked at the other party coldly. She was very strong. Even a sneak attack could not kill her in one strike. But it was enough that the other party was injured. Do you have any misunderstandings with us demons? As long as the misunderstandings are all cleared, we can still be friends. Ching Yu endured the intense pain as she looked at Zhang Lan. The other party was very powerful. Despite being so powerful, he still used a sneak attack. And so many ghost cultivators, he was a very cautious person. How did they provoke this person here? She could not figure it out. There was no reason. A human being was actually able to grasp that terrifying netherworld aura and open the Ba country's hell gates. This person must have an extraordinary background. Zhang Lan looked at her and said, There's no misunderstanding. I want to kill you all. You might have some ideas about me. However, your thoughts are useless against me. As for me, I can kill you all. Humans are truly arrogant. Do you really not place the demon race in your eyes? Ching Yu began to contact Fai Yuan. She needed reinforcements. Arrogant? Zhang Lan instantly appeared in front of Ching Yu, his large hand descending. Ching Yu's pupils constricted, and she immediately fled. However, her shoulder was still touched by Zhang Lan. Bang! Ching Yu's entire shoulder was crushed. Look, if I pinch you lightly, you will shatter. But you think that if you pinch me, I will die. Who is the more arrogant one? Zhang Lan moved again. When the other party heard Zhang Lan's voice, she was stunned for a moment. This gave Zhang Lan a chance. However, Ching Yu had already prepared her attack. She pointed with her remaining hand. This finger seemed to be able to shatter everything. This person was extremely powerful. Zhang Lan felt that his opponent had gathered the power contained within her golden body into this finger. That was why it was so powerful. However, the power of Zhang Lan's power of nine bulls directly transformed into the power of nine tribulations. The aura of the great calamity descended and collided with Qing Yu's power. Boom! The powerful force shattered everything in its path, causing everything around it to disintegrate. Crack! Qing Yu's fingers twisted and then shattered. Bang! Her finger shattered into a bloody mist. At the same time, Zhang Lan's fist pierced through the air. Bang! Half of Ching Yu's body was blasted apart by a single punch. Blood mist scattered, she was still struggling to live. You're from, Kunlun. She was in disbelief. Zhang Lan came to her side and raised his foot. There's no need to be surprised. There's also no need to guess. I am the person you were talking about earlier. Bang! As his voice fell, Zhang Lan stepped on Ching Yu's body. And crushed it. It turned into an endless bloody mist. Only then could she be considered to have been dealt with. Then there was only one left. Zhang Lan looked towards the depths of the cave. He walked in step by step. The ghost cultivators had already opened up a path for him. So far, there were no other powerful auras around. Presumably not. However, he did not dare to stay for too long. After killing Fei Yuan and destroying this place, he would rush back to Kunlun. The demons would not let this matter rest. He didn't mind as the opening of the hell gates would lead the demons to the Ba country. But if the Ba country said that he was the fist god, it would still be very dangerous for him. Therefore, it was always right to return as soon as possible. At this moment, countless ghost cultivators had already surrounded the cave and were attacking from both inside and outside. As long as they could break through the array formation, they would be able to destroy everything here. Zhang Lan arrived at the deepest part of the cave. He realized that Fei Yuan was inside. It was as if he was in the middle of a deep well. Your strength is not bad. You actually killed Ching Yi. However, this array formation isn't easy to break. Do you want to give it a try? Fei Yuan looked at Zhang Lan with a relaxed expression. It was as if this array formation could buy him a long time. Zhang Lan didn't say anything, only placing his hand on the array formation. Then, the array formation lit up. At the same time, a piece of jade appeared in his hand. Following that, the array formation lit up. 
It began to resonate with the array formation here. However, Zhang Lan had made a mistake in the middle and changed it. Then, he continued. Soon, the door opened. Zhang Lan took a step in before speaking. It's broken. Chapter 392 Killing Fei Yuan He looked at Zhang Lan who had already entered. Fei Yuan was very surprised, but did not show it. Your strength is indeed not weak, I wonder if you know that we have a celestial immortal here? Fei Yuan put down the hand that was holding the deep well. He looked at Zhang Lan, then at the array formation. It's not easy to break this array formation with brute force. Your attainments in array formations must be extraordinary. It's really surprising. Zhang Lan looked at Fei Yuan but didn't say anything. The reason why he was able to break the array formation so quickly was because he had seen it previously and had made some preparations. This was the reason why he was able to decipher it so quickly. If he made a mistake, it would be a miscalculation. Fortunately, it was not a big problem. Boom. At this moment, the outside world had already been breached. No stronger aura appeared. If it did, he was already ready for a retreat. This was so that he could escape safely. This was a gamble. Fortunately, it didn't happen. Otherwise, it would be troublesome. It seems like there aren't any celestial immortals here. Zhang Lan said quietly while looking at Fei Yuan. Fei Yuan shrugged and then smiled at Zhang Lan. All right, I admit it. There are indeed no celestial immortals here. After all, there is no need for celestial immortals here. Why don't we have a chat? Moreover, I can tell that your golden body has yet to reach perfection, so you aren't my match, right? Are you curious of how I could tell? Zhang Lan didn't say anything, only looking at him. Tell me about it. Because. Fei Yuan lowered his head. Then, he unleashed his power and threw it to the side. At this time, Zhang Lan had already appeared beside Fei Yuan, preparing to launch a sneak attack. That moment was the best opportunity for a sneak attack, he did not miss it. But, he seemed to have fallen into a trap. Boom. A powerful shockwave rippled. Bang. Zhang Lan was pushed back a little. I am not a match for him. He's too strong. At this moment, Zhang Lan swallowed the great strength golden body pill in his mouth. The gap between the golden bodies was even more terrifying than the difference in cultivation realms. Even with the power of nine bulls, he was at a disadvantage. Only by using his power of nine tribulations could he contend against the other party. But, since there was no way to know the outcome, he had to use his trump card. Zhang Lan was pushed back, and Fei Yuan also attacked. Because I was just guessing. Sneak attacks are most ineffective against me. The gap between us is huge. Today is the day you die. I'll tell you a principle before you die. Never trust your enemies lightly. The power that belonged to Fei Yuan gathered on his five claws, as if it could kill Zhang Lan on the spot. The powerful force seemed to want to tear apart everything around him. Zhang Lan didn't hesitate. He used the nine steps of heavenly travel and retreated a few steps. The moment he retreated, the netherworld halberd appeared in his hand and he tossed it over. Clang. The netherworld halberd was blown to the side and stabbed into the ground. Fei Yuan took a glance at the netherworld halberd and was somewhat shocked. Such concentration of netherworld aura on the halberd was unbelievable. If it could be used, it might be of some use. However, this person was able to hold it at will. His strength was extraordinary. He didn't hesitate. Taking over control of the good stuff was built on the fact that he had killed his opponent. His power surged, attacking Zhang Lan. At this moment, Zhang Lan had finally digested the great strength golden body pill and felt the power of the perfected golden body. But it had a certain burden on the body, he had to end this quickly. Fei Yuan moved, and so did Zhang Lan. The power of nine bulls filled the sky, and the power of nine tribulations began to surge. Boom. Their powers collided. Boom. 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 Zhang Lan and Fei Yuan clashed at unbelievable speeds, their figures disappearing and reappearing. Power swept through the surroundings. Bang! The cave exploded and the surrounding land collapsed. Power swept through everything. Boom! Terrifying power spread outwards with Zhang Lan and Fei Yuan as its center, forming a massive crater in the ground. Zhang Lan didn't care about anything else. He looked at Fei Yuan and took action again. At this moment, he had completely grasped the power of the perfected golden body. 
Fei Yuan looked at Zhang Lan in disbelief, also using his own powerful secret technique. Zhang Lan's attack arrived first. The power of nine tribulations began to appear. The feeling of a great calamity descended upon Fei Yuan's heart, but he was not affected. His power had been fully condensed. At this moment, the shadow of a great rock appeared behind him and a powerful aura spread out in all directions. Boom! Zhang Lan's fist struck the great rock's five claws. It was a contest of strength. They wreaked havoc in their surroundings. Bang! The five claws began to shatter. How is this possible? How did you suddenly become so strong? Fei Yian's eyes widened as he spoke. The only response he received was Zhang Lan's cold eyes. A powerful aftershock followed. Moo! All of a sudden, a cow's cry came from the void. It was as if a giant bull that could pierce through the sky was crossing through space. The giant rock felt the pressure. At this moment, the giant bull appeared. It carried the aura of a great calamity, crushing mountains and rivers, smashing through all obstacles. Bang! The giant rock was directly shattered. Zhang Lan's fist smashed through Fei Yuan's attack. Without any hesitation, Fei Yuan swung his fist to the side, and blocked the attack with his other hand. Crack! His hand was bent and broken, and he was sent flying. Boom! He crashed into a rock, already seriously injured. Zhang Lan moved and landed beside him. It would appear that it is not that I trust you lightly. Rather, you have underestimated me. Pooh! This, this place is extremely important to the demon race. I shall wait for you on the road to the Yellow Springs. Fei Yuan looked at Zhang Lan and spoke with difficulty. The other party was indeed extraordinary. No wonder Qing Yu died at the hands of the other party. Zhang Lan extended his hand, and the netherworld halberd flew out from the ground and returned to his hand. That won't happen. This isn't the first time. I've disintegrated your people. Not once did they find me. Even as I'm standing in front of you, you don't know that I'm the one who destroyed your plan. You even wanted to rope me in. Therefore, from the beginning to the end, I am only someone you wanted to rope in. Not the target you want to kill. Isn't that so? Zhang Lan walked over to Fei Yuan and said. When Fei Yuan heard Zhang Lan's words, he was stunned. He looked at Zhang Lan in disbelief. So it's you? No wonder I can't win you over. You actually became so powerful in secret. Then Kunlun wouldn't know either, right? If they knew, wouldn't they have been the first to get rid of you? As far as I know, before Fei Yuan could finish speaking, Zhang Lan stomped down. You demons have said this before. Bang! He crushed half of Fei Yuan's body with his foot. The immense pain prevented Fei Yuan from speaking. Let me ask you a question. Why are the demons so obsessed with opening the netherworld entrance? Zhang Lan asked. He still did not know the other party's motive. Do you think I'll tell you? Fei Yuan asked. Bang! Zhang Lan didn't ask any more questions and directly stomped the other party into a bloody mist. After confirming that Fei Yuan was dead, he put away the netherworld halberd and destroyed the deep well. Then, he left this region, to prevent any experts from approaching. As for bringing the deep well back to study, it was too dangerous. What if it had some peculiar effects? In that case, he would have truly helped the demon race and done something foolish. He activated his nine steps of heavenly travel and left this place. As for the ghost cultivators, they would return on their own. Chapter 393 Your Despair is Our Lifeline Zhang Lan fled the desolate stone forest overnight. He didn't run straight for Kunlun. Instead, he fled south and chose to take a detour. After confirming that there were no problems, he would return to Kunlun. This was to ensure he wasn't being targeted. During this period, the other party might come to pry into his location and secrets, so he had to be prepared. It all depended on whether or not the other party cared about the desolate stone forest. He could not rule out the possibility that the demons had obtained information from Ba Country and thus took a fancy to his deity position. Perhaps they were even chasing him now. Boom! Suddenly, a rumbling sound came from the sky. Zhang Lan looked up. It was a voice from the sky. Someone is going to obtain the deity position? He was puzzled. This time, it was highly likely that it was the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race or the Heavenly Human race. They seemed to have gained quite a bit over the years. He did not pay too much attention to it and continued to flee, preventing any experts from the demon race from catching up to him. 
that would be very dangerous for him. Moreover, the effects of the great strength golden body pill were about to wear off. He felt weak. Extremely weak. He had to find a place to hide. The next day, powerful individuals entered the borders of Ba country. It was like a scorching sun that illuminated the world. At the same time, dark clouds arrived from Ba country. The demon race wants to enter my Ba country and exterminate my ghost horde. Ba country's ghost chi turned into a human face as it looked at the demon race experts that entered. You really know how to put a label on people. Di Jing looked at Ba country's ghost chi and said softly. He looked middle-aged and had a cold expression. He looked intimidating. You are not human. Ba Country's ghost Chi looked at Di Jing and continued. A demon is a demon. You're not a human even if you take a human form. Di Jing did not mind Ba Country's ghost Chi's words and said directly. Has Ba Country given others the right to open the hell gates? My brain isn't working well, but I know I can't tell you this. The Ba Country will never betray the person who has obtained our Ba Nation's friendship. The Ba Country's ghost Chi said directly. He has destroyed an important place of ours. Is Ba Country going to bear the consequences? Di Jing said coldly as if he was questioning. If you want us to bear the responsibility, so be it. Ba Country's ghost Chi said bluntly. The one who has Ba Country's friendship has used our trespassing of otherworldly soldiers, which means that the ones responsible for the destruction of the place are indeed our soldiers. Since it was done by Ba Country, it is no big deal for us to bear the responsibility. So, come on, let's go to war. To bear the responsibility means to wage war? Di Jing asked Ghost Chi. If we don't start a war, how do we show that it's our Ba Country's soldiers who had acted? Ba Country's Ghost Chi asked. Di Jing looked at Ba Country's Ghost Chi. Finally, he turned around and left. War with Ba Country. Crazy. Other people had their reasons for fighting, but Ba Country only fought for the sake of fighting. The reason why they had fought with the demon race was even more ridiculous. Everyone else was fighting, and it would be very embarrassing if Ba Country did not fight. It was as if they knew nothing, so they had no choice but to fight. As they couldn't defeat Kunlun, they decided to fight the demons. This was the reason. After leaving Ba Country, a follower appeared beside Di Jing and asked curiously. Sir, isn't Ba Country being too disrespectful? If they know what's good for them then they won't be Ba country anymore. Moreover, since we already know what we want to know, there is naturally no need for us to stay here. Di Jing walked in the air. The aura of an expert caused everything in the surroundings to keep a respectful distance. Sir, do you know who did it? The follower asked curiously. Di Jing took a step forward and everything around him retreated. It was as though he had instantly traversed an endless distance. It is not easy to obtain the friendship of Ba country. Recently, the only one who can obtain their friendship is naturally the fist god, Di Jing said softly. After taking two steps, he suddenly stopped and continued. This person isn't simple. He's different from the others. However, it is unknown whether he is here for the demon race or the netherworld. He is worth paying attention to. However, I am even more curious as to whether he has separated himself from Kunlun or did he come out on a whim. I can give him a try if I have the chance. Central Plains. In the forest where the heavenly human race and the heavenly feather phoenix race were fighting. A group of three quickly brought Hong Ya towards the heavenly human race. Hong Ya looked at them in disbelief. You people are actually traitors? What benefits did the heavenly human race give you? There are some things that you don't understand. We might not necessarily be from the heavenly feather phoenix race. Yan Yan, who was holding on to the elegant woman, said coldly. There's no need for you to struggle. This opportunity and this route were planned out by us for a long time. It will not be that easy for the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race to discover that you are missing, nor will it be easy for them to find us. By the time they find us, we will already be in the Heavenly Human Race's territory, so just accept it, said Yan Yan. Why? Why did you capture me? Hong Ya asked. She could sense that she was doomed. Since they had made their move, it was not easy for them to fail. By the time her race found her, it was probably too late. There is something on your body that the heavenly human race wants, and it is extremely important. Thus, you should understand that after we reach the territory of the heavenly human race, it will be the time of your death. Therefore, as a form of pity, you can take a look at your homeland on the way there, said Yan Yan. 
Her expression did not change at all. Hong Ya fell silent. Perhaps you are starting to imagine that an expert will come looking for you. Perhaps he will even save you at the critical moment and become your support. Many desperate people will have such thoughts, especially women. That is because everyone in such a situation would hope that a powerful being would descend from the heavens and become their savior. What a pity. But reality is cruel. No one will save you, said Yan Yan. There was no change in her voice. It was as if there was only despair in her words. You've been through this before? Hong Ya asked. Yan Yan didn't reply. She just looked ahead and said. We're almost there. It seems like your fate is also very tragic. Hong Ya looked ahead and felt the aura of the heavenly human race. It was as if she saw death. Was she going to die like this? At this moment, do you wish for some accidents to happen? Do you hope that someone will notice your disappearance and catch up with you? But no, no one will catch up. This is the result of our efforts. Your despair is our chance at survival. I'm sorry, said Yan Yan. Roar. Just then, an angry roar came from behind them. Following that, a violent vibe was rapidly approaching. One of the three immediately said, What a violent aura. It seems to be coming in our direction. That shouldn't be the case. The Heavenly Feather Phoenix race shouldn't have discovered it so early. They were surprised. Demons? But I have never seen demons with such a violent aura. It feels a little strange. Could it be that the other party isn't here for us? Another person spoke. At the same time, Hong Ya looked behind her. For a moment, she seemed to know who it was. Put Hong Ya down. An endless roar came from behind. Chapter 394 Your Savior, Someone Really Caught Up. The three of them were surprised. They did not know what went wrong, but they did not panic too much. This was within their expectations. Since they had chosen to make a move, they would naturally have made sufficient preparations. Only then could they complete the mission better. Looks like you are lucky. Someone actually managed to discover your disappearance ahead of time. It seems like he discovered it the moment we left. Yan Yan looked down at Hong Ya and said. To prevent you from doing any cheap tricks, and to prevent us from having the difficulty increased midway. I can only let you sleep early. Perhaps you will never wake up again. If you wake up, you should thank this person who suddenly caught up with you. Perhaps you don't even know who he is. Unfortunately, we can't wait for him to catch up to you. Yan Yan moved her hand. Hong Ya, who had wanted to say something, lost consciousness. Yan Yan looked at the unconscious Hong Ya and sighed. She still fell asleep with a trace of hope. What a lucky person. If only she could do the same back then. Then, she looked behind her and said. Take out your Dharma treasures. The other party doesn't look that strong. We should be able to stop him. If he can catch up, he should be faster than us. However, we will reach our destination soon. We just have to hold on for a while. The other two didn't hesitate at all, and they directly placed some Dharma traps along the way to interfere with the other's movements. However, their speed did not decrease in the slightest, nor did they check if the Dharma treasure had finally taken effect. If they stopped to check, they would be putting the card before the horse. But they soon felt it. There was a crash of power behind him. Boom. Boom. It was as if someone was charging around. The power of the Dharma treasures was rapidly disintegrating. This is definitely a vicious beast, right? Someone said. The violent aura was getting stronger and closer. Give Hong Ya back. The roar was getting closer. Without any hesitation, the three of them sped up. We're almost there, there's no need to pay him any attention. As long as we hand the person over to the heavenly human race, it will be enough. The three of them moved forward at their fastest speed. Soon, they arrived at the location where they were supposed to meet with the heavenly human race. The figures behind them could also be seen with the naked eye. It was a youth who was running. He had injuries on his body as he cut through all obstacles without stopping. His violent aura was increasing, and his speed kept increasing. He did not see anything around him, only moving forward. Finally, he saw the elegant figure. Yan Yan and the other two were shocked. Did this person not care about his injuries? But it didn't matter. They had already arrived. The people of the heavenly human race were here. At the same time, Yan Yan threw Hong Ya out. The people from the heavenly human race were there to receive them. The group of five. They caught Hong Ya. However, when the youth saw Hong Ya being thrown up, he immediately rushed over. 
The violent aura on his body surged as he used his fastest speed. When the other party picked up Hong Ya, the youth walked up to him. At this moment, his teeth seemed to have become incomparably sharp as he bit down on that person's neck. Then, rip, he tore open the other party's neck. Give me back Hong Ya. Poo. Blood spurted from his mouth. While the other party was in a daze, the youth grabbed Hong Ya and fell to the side. At this moment, everyone was stunned. The other party was too crazy. He was like a beast that had lost its mind. Yan Yan and the others actually felt a sense of lingering fear when they stood at the side. This young man was too inconceivable. He exuded a ferocious and violent aura. The youth landed on one side, hugging Hong Ya and looking around. This was already the territory of the heavenly human race. Even though all of the powerful beings were engaged in a battle, it wasn't something that someone of his caliber could barge into. The youth was surrounded. There weren't many people and he could still run. Don't even think about escaping. Your strength isn't enough to escape our pursuit. The heavenly human race member who was bitten on the neck held his neck as he coldly looked at the youth. Stay behind. If you want to escape, are you planning to pass through the battlefield outside? At this moment, the way they had come was already sealed. He didn't give the youth any chance to escape. Upon hearing that he could enter the battlefield, the youth did not hesitate. He carried Hong Ya and rushed towards the battlefield. That was his only hope, he could not stay here for long. If he stayed, he would never be able to leave this place. Not to mention taking Hong Ya back, he still had to return to the inn. Looking down at the unconscious Hong Ya, the youth used all his strength to run towards the battlefield. He had no idea what was going on over there or how dangerous it was. But, he would not be afraid. Stop him! shouted the heavenly human who had his neck bitten. The other party was simply courting death. They were not considered strong here. However, on the battlefield, the most commonly seen experts weren't true immortals anymore. They would be simply courting death. They could not really let Hong Ya die here. After all, she was quite useful to them. As for this youth, they could only kill him on the spot. The youth looked at the people around him and ignored them. He rushed to the front. A violent aura began to appear. Boom! Some attacks appeared. The people in front also began to attack. The target was the youth. Bang! The attack landed on the youth's body, but the youth didn't dodge at all. Instead, he charged towards the attack. A powerful force hit the young man. However, to the surprise of the people in front, the youth directly rushed out from the attack and even broke through their direction. He flew towards the battlefield. I hurt him, and it's definitely not light. He endured it without saying a word and continued running. Is he still human? Are humans that powerful? The people who were blocking in front were shocked. This youth had exceeded their expectations. What are you people waiting for? Chase him. The one with the neck injury had already begun to recover. The battlefield isn't something he can charge through. It's one thing for him to die, but our target can't die. We must snatch her back. The others didn't speak any further and chased after him instead. There would only be more people after that, not less. But on the battlefield, they appeared to be somewhat weak. They hoped there wouldn't be too many surprises. Yan Yun and the others were also leaving quickly. Their mission had been completed, and the follow-up had nothing to do with them. However, the youth's actions stunned them. Humans were truly unimaginable. Didn't he think that he would die? Do you think he can leave alive? Or can he bring Lady Hong Ya back to Watong Mountain? Someone asked. I don't know, but I do hope he does, another said. Let's go. Our mission is completed. It's impossible for us to continue staying here. We have also received the remuneration we need. The rest will depend on our luck. Let's see how long we can survive in this dangerous wilderness, said Yan Yun. Chapter 395 Seeking Help from the Fist God Boom! The battle between the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race and the Heavenly Human race wreaked havoc on the battlefield for countless miles. A large number of experts were competing on the battlefield. The power of their spells did not stop. The earth was in tatters, and all living beings were nowhere to be seen. At the same time, a youth rushed into the battlefield. He ran quickly towards the ruined earth. He didn't turn around, fearlessly blocking everything. He was carrying an unconscious girl. His entrance was insignificant to the entire battlefield. No one was surprised by his arrival. Not long after the youth ran out, 
a group of people caught up. At this moment, a type of signal belonging to the celestial clan appeared. The celestial race beings that had caught up were feeling rather nervous. I hope those seniors of the same race can see it. This was the item for their mission. It could highlight the importance of their mission. But it didn't affect much. Although it wasn't too far away, there were still some experts from the heavenly human race who saw it. Then, they looked at the source of the signal and looked ahead. It was a youth running with a young girl. Although he did not know who the other party was, it was better to leave him behind. An early stage heaven immortal expert extended his hand and started attacking the youth. His attack wouldn't kill the other party on the spot, but he would definitely be severely injured. The member of the heavenly feather phoenix race, who had been fighting the heavenly human around them, also looked down. At that moment, they were stunned. Wasn't the person being carried, Hong Ya? Shit. Without any hesitation, he condensed a flintlock and threw it out. Bang. The heavenly human's attack was directly neutralized by the fire spear. However, the power still swept towards the youth. Boom. The youth felt the attack and changed Hong Ya from his back to his front. Then, the power of the attack hit him. He was sent flying. After rolling on the ground twice, he got up and continued running. His blood dripped onto the battlefield. He didn't make a sound nor did he stop. Looks like these two are important. The heavenly human cultivator said to the cultivator of the heavenly feather phoenix race who had stopped him. HMPH, we naturally have to protect those that your heavenly human race wants to touch, the member of the heavenly feather phoenix race said coldly. He did not dare to reveal the importance of Hong Ya. Then, the great battle erupted again. However, the people of the heavenly human race began to move towards that youth. If this continued, even the aftershocks would be able to take their lives. It was not that easy for the two to cross the battlefield. This was especially the case with a party from the heavenly human race chasing after them. The youth carried Hong Ya and kept running forward, he had thick skin. However, he felt as though everything around him was trying to tear his skin apart and hurt him. Pain shot through him, but he did not dare to stop or slow down. He knew that once he stopped, he would stay here forever. At this moment, he saw that everyone seemed to be heading towards him. Although no one attacked him directly, the aftershocks of the attacks were still sweeping over. The youth gritted his teeth. There was no fear in his eyes. A violent aura pulsed from his body. He had to run back. Boom. A strange change seemed to have suddenly occurred on the battlefield. Many people felt that the battlefield was moving towards a certain place. Although no one knew what was happening, both sides were moving in that direction. There must be something wrong. Soon after, a few immortals moved over as well. Both sides were very curious about the situation on the other side. However, the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race soon regretted their decision. Some people recognized Hong Ya. If this continued to move like this, Hong Ya would definitely die. Meanwhile, the people of the Heavenly Human race were stunned. A youth was carrying a girl rushing across the battlefield. The direction he was heading towards was the camp of the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race. So, needless to say, one of them was an important member of the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race. At this moment, the Heavenly Human race held even more of an advantage, trying to stop those two. What they really needed to do was to make that youth lose his mobility. The aftermath was enough. The people of the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race had gone all out but they could only prevent the people of the heavenly human race from directly attacking the two. At this moment, the aftershocks of the attacks landed on the Yu's body. There were wounds on his body and fresh blood was flowing out. His running legs took the attack, but he continued to persevere. However, no matter how much he persisted, his speed began to slow down. This was even more painful. A vicious cycle. He felt as if he was going to die here. The youth breathed heavily. He felt that he was reaching his limit, but he had yet to escape the battlefield. Intense pain came from his body. His steps were incomparably heavy and everything around him was like a storm. He was like a rootless duckweed that could collapse at any moment. Chase after him. He's not going to make it. Furthermore, he's heavily injured. He won't be able to run for long. The people behind had their shields on and were approaching the youngster. Their pace was never fast. However, the youth was even slower now. That was why they were able to catch up. The youth who heard the voice wanted to speed up, but he couldn't feel his strength anymore. 
His consciousness began to fade. Danger, fatal danger. This was his most vivid feeling. He recalled what the Eighth Prince had told him. If his life was in danger, he could try to say a name. Perhaps he could help him out of danger. The youth remembered that name, but he felt that it was unreliable. But now, he could only trust the Eighth Prince. I hope the stupid dragon isn't teasing me. The youth who was running slowly opened his dry mouth and a weak voice came from the corner of his mouth. If someone were beside him, he might be able to hear the last few words that came out from the youth's mouth. Unparalleled Fist God. Western Wastelands. On a nameless mountain. Zhang Lan, who was originally recovering in seclusion, suddenly opened his eyes. He felt someone calling out his name, but it was not the people around him. And not just anyone. It was someone related to his deity position. Zhang Lan then checked the three light spots on the deity position. At this moment, there was a light spot that was flickering. The youth? Zhang Lan was rather surprised. The eighth prince had said that the youth had gone to the central plains and had even told him the title of the unparalleled fist god. Is he in danger? This really isn't a good time. He had just recovered, and he didn't know if he could use his power to its fullest. Furthermore, it should be very difficult for the youth to encounter danger. After all, he should have the innkeeper with him. Who was it that made the youth seek help? He had some doubts but he still took out the mountain sea mirror. Normally, even if the other party had a fortuitous opportunity on him, he would not be able to cast his gaze over. Therefore, he could only use his mountain sea mirror to find out what the youth had encountered. At the same time, he activated his one-leaf vision frantically. To prevent anyone from looking over, the passage began to connect. At this moment, Zhang Lan was looking at the mountain sea mirror and saw countless forces bombarding it. The earth shattered and stretched endlessly. Without paying too much attention, he looked towards the center of the image. It was a severely wounded youth who was fleeing with Hong Ya. He was about to reach his limit. If anyone can really hear me, please, let me have enough strength to run. The youth's weak voice reached Zhang Lan's ears. Chapter 396 Unstoppable Zhang Lan looked at the youth, at the power ripples, and at the people chasing after him. Heavenly human race. A destined enemy of his. However, Zhang Lan didn't care about these things and started analyzing the situation instead. The celestial immortals are quite far away. It's just mainly the aftershocks from the clashes between heaven immortals. There is not a single heaven immortal in pursuit, and they are restricted by other heaven immortals. As long as the youth can continue running, there is nothing to worry about. As long as he does not stop, he will not die, so. This meant that the innkeeper was most likely watching. But I can't be sure. But if I want the youth to escape, I can't give the celestial immortals time to react. Otherwise, the youth will be in absolute danger. With my current strength, there's no way I can protect him. Without any hesitation, Zhang Lan extended his hand and began to exert his influence. He couldn't think for long. Firstly, the youth could not last much longer. Secondly, he might be discovered. He needed to put away the mountain sea mirror before he was discovered. He had to end this quickly. The youth walked with difficulty. The people behind him were about to catch up. His speed has completely slowed down. Let's kill him and bring him back to the heavenly feather phoenix race. This way, we can prevent any accidents from happening. The heavenly humans began to approach the youth, as if it wouldn't be long before they completely arrived at his side. At that time, it would be an absolute crisis for the youth. Is it useless? The youth felt exhausted and his steps were heavy. Foolish dragon, you are indeed teasing me. The youth felt that he had to settle scores with the eighth prince when he had the chance. Unfortunately, he couldn't run anymore, just as he was thinking about it. All of a sudden, it was as if an invisible hand was placed on his shoulder. Following that, a surge of energy began to flow into his body. For a moment, he felt much lighter. This is, what was going on? While he was puzzled, a voice entered his mind. Run, use all your strength. The faster you run, the more I can help you. The voice was indistinguishable, but the youth was stunned. He knew the source of the power. The eighth prince had not lied to him. The fist god could really help him. He did not know what price he had to pay, but the youth did not hesitate. A new hope ignited in his heart. The faster he ran, the safer he would be. But right now, the burden on his body was too heavy. He needed to pay a huge price to start running. 
At that moment, the young man clenched his teeth tightly. The blood in his body started to circulate rapidly and even showed signs of boiling. Run! The teenager shouted in his heart. At the same time, he let out a roar. Ah! His blood boiled to his feet. At that moment, he was filled with strength as he raised his leg. Whoosh! The moment he stepped on the ground, he disappeared. Like a beam of light, he quickly crossed the battlefield. The heavenly humans that were about to catch up were stunned. They were a bit confused. How could a human youth that was clearly no longer able to make it explode with such terrifying strength? And this speed was like a beam of light, it was impossible to capture. They knew that they could no longer keep up. They could only hope that some of their fellow race members could catch up and stop him. Indeed, there were some celestial immortals who were intercepting the youth. Only those few could escape the restraints of the battle. Furthermore, they had just escaped and only had a few moments to act. At this moment, the youth ran forward with all his might. His body was making sounds, and his blood was boiling. His body seemed to be on fire, but he could feel himself running fast. Soon. Soon. If he was given some more time, he could return to Watong Mountain. Except, Pooh. He spat out a mouthful of blood. He had long surpassed his limits as he ran. His body was under immense pressure. This pressure could shatter his body. Pain shot through him. The pain was unbearable. But he did not stop. He gritted his teeth and increased his speed. Even if his bones were broken, he could still run. He wouldn't stop. Ah! Another roar rang out, and the youth sped up a little. Blood oozed out of his face. Blood dripped onto Hong Ya's face. Hong Ya's eyes seemed to move, but she could not open them. The blood from the youth's facial features was equivalent to his final effort. He was like a ray of light crossing the battlefield. It caught everyone off guard. He was too fast. There was no time to react. The heaven immortal in front finally arrived in front of the youth. A powerful force seemed to stop the young man. Don't stop. Keep running. Zhang Lan's voice rang out in the youth's mind. However, Zhang Lan was surprised to find that the youth wasn't listening at all. He seemed to have lost consciousness. Such strong willpower. It was only at this moment that Zhang Lan realized that the youth was somewhat amazing. At the same time, a shadow appeared around the young man, like a bull that was running. A cow that could crush mountains and rivers and break through space. Facing a heaven immortal, the youth directly rushed over without any hesitation. Only Zhang Lan knew that the youth was merely acting on instinct. Moo! A bull cry sounded. The youth collided with celestial immortal. Bang! A powerful collision sound rang out. The heavenly human that was blocking the youth was directly sent flying. No one could stop him. The light pierced through the darkness and returned to the light. The young man carried Hong Ya and crossed the battlefield to the safety of Watong Mountain. Everyone looked at him in shock. Bang! The moment he returned, the young man collapsed. However, the repercussions from his run were still there. The moment he fell, he rolled away. Hong Ya also rolled to the side. Unlike Hong Ya, the youth rolled to an old man's feet. The old man looked at the young man and squatted down. He patted the young man's head and said happily. Good, very good. I didn't waste my time accompanying you here. Then, he looked at Hong Ya. It seems that this little girl still has some use. The innkeeper patted the youth twice, and the youth's injuries began to recover. He looked up at the sky. A person appeared in the sky. It was a young man. The young man looked up at the sky as though a celestial being had descended. The entire battlefield was looking at him. And on that person's face, there was only calmness. It was as if everyone below subconsciously felt that this person was superior to them. The innkeeper didn't feel that way. What bothered him was the direction the man was looking. Yes, he was looking at Zhang Lan. The moment the other party saw him, Zhang Lan felt a strong sense of oppression and danger. When he looked into the other party's eyes, he felt that the other party had a feeling that everything was insignificant. It was as if no one was more important than him. However, in that instant, Zhang Lan understood. The genius from the heavenly human race. The entire battlefield seemed to be opening up a path for him as an invisible pressure enveloped everyone's hearts. Experts of the same level were no match for him. Leave your name. A calm voice sounded from the heavenly human's mouth. 
it was as if Zhang Lan would not leave so easily if he did not leave his name. Chapter 397 8 Desolates Imperial Lord Lun Ling. Central Plains. In the sky above the battlefield between the Heavenly Feather Phoenix race and the Heavenly Human race. A young man stared at the sky as if waiting for an answer. For the other party to be able to extend this far, he was definitely not an ordinary person. In fact, he gave off a strange feeling. The innkeeper also looked up, not knowing if the other party would leave his name behind. He could look over, but he didn't. The way the other party acted was somewhat different. Zhang Lan looked at his opponent. He could choose to close the passage and retreat safely. But name, rather than letting them guess, it was better to confirm it for them. He opened his mouth and spoke. At this moment, the genius from the heavenly human race sensed that a voice was currently sounding from the sky. It was a voice that was difficult for others to hear, as if it was the voice of heaven and earth. I am, the eight desolates imperial lord Lun Ling. This voice seemed to have a strange power that was intimidating. Hearing this voice, the innkeeper was surprised. Meanwhile, the heavenly human race's genius only watched, no one knowing what he was thinking. We'll meet again. Zhang Lan closed the passage and put away the mountain sea mirror. Cold sweat broke out on his forehead, too dangerous. He is extremely strong. I feel like he hasn't surpassed the realm of a celestial immortal. This person is a rising star for the heavenly human race. According to what he knew, the ones who controlled the heavenly human race weren't the older generation. They were the elites of the younger generation, it should be this person. The enemy he must face in the future. A celestial immortal was already an extremely powerful existence across the entire Grand Desolate World. However, the Grand Desolate World definitely did not lack celestial immortals, it was just that they rarely appeared. As for the name of Eight Desolate's Imperial Lord Lun Ling, that was a name that had appeared in Kunlun before. It was the new deity position name that Imperial Lord Shi he had given him. Although he might have to change it in the future. But now, there was no direction at all. The only direction this title pointed to was Kunlun. However, it did not point directly at Kunlun either. This way, he could be better hidden. This could buy him more time. Who? He heaved a sigh of relief and left without hesitation. He searched for the next location for seclusion. He would return to Kunlun after he recovered. I felt that something was wrong just now. The youth's speed is indeed very fast, but the battlefield is too vast. Crossing it will take quite some time. After such a long time, there were actually no immortals affecting the youth. That shouldn't be possible. Zhang Lan was puzzled as he flew through the air. After some thought, he had an answer. Did the innkeeper exert his influence too? This was highly possible. He did not think that he could fight against celestial immortals. At that time, if a celestial immortal had interfered, he would be helpless. Heaven immortals were only heaven immortals. There were countless immortals at the heaven immortal level in this kind of battlefield, and they were not considered to be a core force. Only celestial immortals could be considered experts on such a battlefield. True immortals, were just cannon fodder. As for Tao immortals, there were not many of them. There were probably only 10 Tao immortals in Kunlun. The number of Tao immortals in other factions should also be around this number as well. As for those above the Tao immortal realm, that was beyond him for now. Perhaps it would be a deity or a saint. He could only guess and was unable to directly understand it with his current cultivation. Besides, it was not the right time yet, and there was no need to know too much about it. It was easy to affect one's progress if one aimed too high. Except, he probably knew why there were so many natural disasters everywhere. As the various large factions fought, the influence of their strength continued without end. When this strength overflowed, it would bring more or less influence to the surrounding regions. As the power ripples spread, the elements of the world would be disrupted. This would in turn disrupt the ecological balance. For immortal cultivators, these effects were insignificant. But to ordinary people, this was a natural disaster. In the end, Zhang Lan shook his head, he had no intention of doing anything. He could only attempt to understand and feel these matters. As an insignificant heaven immortal, the only thing he could do was protect himself. His aim was to try to become stronger. Only then could he live in peace in the great desolate world. Only then could he bear his own responsibility. If he had the strength, he would exert his influence on the grand desolate world. If not, he would leave it to fate. 
It was unknown how much time had passed since spring. Kunlun. Beside the jade pool, under the peach blossom tree. Ao Longyu sat beside the tree and carved a small horizontal line on it. Fifteen years, one month, she sat upright under the tree and looked at the branches on the tree. She nodded slightly. It's indeed fifteen years and a month. Then, she turned around and looked in the direction of the ninth summit. Her junior brother had left for fifteen years and had yet to return. She did not know when he would return. She had not been cultivating properly all these years. If this continued, her cultivation would be overtaken by her junior brother. But, she wanted to wait for her junior brother to return before cultivating properly. But this time, her junior brother had been away for a very long time. Last time, it had only been a few years. Senior sister. Lin Sha's voice could be heard. Ao Longyu looked outside and opened the way for Lin Sha. Seeing Lin Sha enter, Ao Longyu spoke first. Junior sister, have you become an immortal? Yes, senior sister. Lin Sha looked happy. There were some troubles, but fortunately, I managed to overcome them. Right, senior sister. Junior brother has yet to return? Yes, he hasn't returned yet. Ao Longyu nodded slightly. Senior sister is not in a good mood. Lin Sha thought for a while and said. Senior sister, let me ask you a question. Before you left, did anything unhappy happen between senior sister and junior brother? Something unhappy. Ao Longyu immediately recalled what happened that day. I guess not. No? Lin Sha looked at Ao Longyu and asked. Then what happened? Ao Longyu looked up at Lin Sha and hesitated. In the end, she said. The other day Junior asked me to close my eyes. She roughly told him what happened that day and said. After that happened, I ran back. Junior brother shouldn't be angry, right? Upon hearing Ao Longyu's words, Lin Sha's eyes widened in shock. Junior, junior brother, he, 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 he. Ao Longyu's face was slightly flushed, but she still remained seated on the spot. After Lin Sha calmed down, she said, Senior sister, don't worry. Junior brother will definitely return as soon as possible. Senior sister is incomparably beautiful. Junior brother would never forget touching senior sister's lips. He probably can't wait to come back. Is that so? Ao Longyu asked in a low voice. Her heart calmed down after hearing what Shaw said. At the old wine inn, the eighth prince was wiping the table and set up the overturned chair. Just now, Uncle Ao Yi came to drink and fought with the Pixio again. In the past few years, he had given Pixio a lot of money. These two were definitely together to cheat him of his money. The Pixio went to cheat the youth in the past. Now that he was not around, he had come to cheat him. Next time, I should just set the table in the backyard and let them go face to face. It doesn't matter if they fight or not. It doesn't affect the inn. Big brother, the eighth prince immediately turned his head. Just as he was about to make his move, he realized that Yan Xian had already retreated far away. This girl from the Qilin race was getting more and more familiarized with his actions. Chapter 398 Mo Jangdong's Discoveries, Brother and Sister Aren't Back Yet? Yan Xian hid behind the door and asked the Eighth Prince. The Eighth Prince took a plate of peanuts from the side and placed them near the door. Then, he continued cleaning. No, it's been more than ten years. I don't know if they're ever coming back, said the Eighth Prince. Speaking of which, the Eighth Prince was rather curious. Haven't you always been lost? Why do I feel like you can come to the inn often? The Earth Qilin race, Yan Xian, couldn't even leave Kunlun, but she could accurately find the inn. She would even pass by twice a month. Every time, she would ask for peanuts. Because in the eyes of the earth, the inn is like a ray of light, especially bright. I am able to follow the light and come over. Yan Xian began to pack the peanuts. These were the rations for the next week. Although she might not be able to find the way, she needed to be prepared. Like a beam of light? The eighth prince was puzzled. He knew that the inn was not ordinary. It was a very good place. If he inherited it, he would definitely profit greatly. However, he hadn't expected that it would shine in the eyes of the Qilin race. That's enough. In any case, I can see this inn from afar. But I can only see the light and nothing else, said Yan Xian. The eighth prince didn't understand either, but this also meant that the inn was special. At this moment, he looked outside and saw that someone had come to the gate. 
The girl from the Kilin race was blocking the way. Without any hesitation, the eighth prince made his move. His halberd appeared in his hand. Bang! It struck Yan Xian's face. He sent Yan Xian flying. Yan Xian felt like she hadn't done anything. She was just pretending to be a peanut. She did not dare to pretend anymore. Brother-in-law, I've already cleared out the girl from the Qilin race blocking the way. The eighth prince immediately came to the door and said to Zhang Lan who had just returned. Zhang Lan. The eighth prince was quite ruthless to his benefactor. The girl from the Qilin race had saved his life before. Boss and the others haven't returned yet? Zhang Lan entered the inn and asked. The old inn was as deserted as ever. Fifteen years had passed since he left Kunlun. He spent some time recovering, and then immediately hurried back. Nothing happened along the way. The demon race didn't do anything to disturb him, and the heavenly human race was the same. So far, everything was fine. Right, it's been more than ten years. I wonder if they can still return. If they can't come back, I'll change the name of the inn to Eighth Prince's Inn, the Eighth Prince said. In the future, he would inherit the inn with tears in his eyes. Zhang Lan didn't pay it much attention. The youth was seriously injured, so theoretically speaking, he shouldn't have recovered yet. However, with the boss around, it wouldn't be a problem no matter how serious his injuries were. In the end, Zhang Lan asked for some wine and returned to Kunlun. I'll pay a visit to my master first, then I'll go find my senior sister. He felt like it had been a long time since he had seen his senior sister. In the past, he had never felt this way when he was in seclusion. Perhaps it was because he had gone out. Central Plains. Mount Wutong. The youth woke up in the room. Instantly, he thought of Hong Ya. Where's Hong Ya? He planned to ask the Pixio. However, he discovered that this wasn't an inn. It wasn't a Pai Shu looking at him. I'm here. A sudden voice was heard. Calm, unperturbed. At this moment, the young man saw Hong Ya standing beside him without any injuries. You have been unconscious for nearly half a year and was severely injured. You are almost recovered now. Hong Ya looked at the youth and lowered her head in gratitude. Thank you for coming all this way to save me. I will always remember your kindness. If one day you are in danger, I will save you even if it means death. In return for saving my life. The youth scratched his head and smiled. It's okay. I just saw you in danger and went to save you. You don't have to be so polite. Saving a life is not a small matter. I cannot accept it just like that. After confirming that the youth was fine, Hong Ya left the room. The youth watched Hong Ya leave and sighed heavily. You're still so polite. That person told me that it's easiest to move a girl's heart when she is helpless. This advice seemed unreliable. Could it be? He then took out the eight princes' halberd. Do I really need to knock Hong Ya's head? Thinking of this, the youth immediately shook his head. No, no, I can't trust that dragon. I should go back and ask Big Brother. However, the Fist God hasn't made any conditions yet. I have to ask the Eighth Prince about this and see what price I have to pay. He had never dared to forget this. It was all thanks to that person that he was able to bring Hong Ya back. However, he had no idea how the other party did it. I don't know if I can tell Big Brother, but this is a very capable person. The youth thought about it and felt that it was inappropriate. He needed to see the price of the payment and confirm that there was no danger before discussing it with the Eighth Prince. Kunlun. On the Ninth Summit. As Zhang Lan walked along the road, he noticed that there were quite a few weeds around. Looks like I'll have to take care of it later. He stopped thinking about it and walked straight to the peak of the Ninth Summit. His master should be there. If his master was not around, he would go to the Jade Pool first. After that, he would return to take care of the Ninth Summit. It was still winter, but there was no snow left. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to see the weeds. After a while, Zhang Lan saw his master. Mo Zhengdong had also noticed Zhang Lan. He was concerned about his disciples' return. He was glad. Master. Zhang Lan bowed. He also gave some wine to his master. It wasn't good wine this time. The innkeeper wasn't in. It could only be ordinary wine. Mo Zhengdong didn't mind. He took the wine and asked. Did you gain anything from this trip? I gained quite a lot. Zhang Lan handed over the golden lotus as he replied. Master, please take back the heavenly tribulation golden lotus. I no longer need it. No need? 
Mo Jangdong was stunned for a moment, then he looked at Zhang Lan's cultivation. Zhang Lan appeared to be at the perfected void refinement realm, and his eyes narrowed. Lightning flashed in his eyes as he tried to see through Zhang Lan's hidden cultivation. Indeed, early stage human immortal, you have become an immortal. Mo Jangdong was rather surprised. The speed was beyond his expectations, but it was nothing. He had kind of expected it. Then, he reached out his hand to receive the Heavenly Tribulation Golden Lotus. After glancing at it, he frowned. He then kept the Golden Lotus. N, I have become an immortal. Zhang Lan's voice sounded. His head was still lowered. Can you get married now? Mo Jangdong asked with a smile. Master can decide for me with regards to this matter, Zhang Lan replied respectfully. He naturally had no objections. Mo Jangdong laughed. I'll talk to the other summit leaders later. But the wedding should not be taking place so quickly. Do you see the light beams in the main hall? Zhang Lan looked over and saw seven beams of light. It had been 585 years since he entered the sect. It would take another 30 years to light up all nine beams. There are still 30 years before the light beams are fully gathered. It will be convenient for you to get married then. Mo Jangdong thought for a while and said. But if you're in a hurry, we can bring it forward. Chapter 399 Exposed Was it urgent? Zhang Lan felt that he was not in a hurry. He was still unsure of a lot of things, such as whether or not he should rebuild the house. Actually, it would be better if it was normal. I shall leave it up to Master, Zhang Lan said softly. He wasn't in a hurry. Neither did he have any objections in pushing forward the marriage. He wouldn't know the answer to his questions until he got married. Hence, it was not a big problem for him when it came to the time of marriage. As for becoming an immortal early, it was easy for others to know about it. This Zhang Lan didn't mind at all. When he returned after achieving immortality, he already had enough thoughts. Since he had already decided, there was no need for him to be afraid. It was not a big deal to let them know that he was advancing faster than some geniuses. That was all. He just needed to slowly reduce his presence. They didn't know how he would be doing after becoming an immortal either. But after he became an immortal, there would be less criticism. This was something that was normal. It was difficult for a group of non-immortals to criticize an immortal. They were on completely different levels. However, it did not mean that he would not be criticized. There were many types of people. A human's heart is inscrutable. Everyone is different. It is impossible for everyone to be united. Some people would no longer dare to criticize him, while others would continue to look down on him. Sometimes, they will utter a few words of criticism about him. He merely used the resources of an entire summit to reach where he is now. He is just lucky enough to become the goddess fiancé. This is also the reason why Kunlun did her best to prevent him from failing to become an immortal. He merely became an immortal because of the immense support and luck he had. This type of people was used to being disadvantaged. There would always be people who couldn't stand someone else's sudden rise to power. Especially when the person he initially looked down on suddenly became unreachable. However, Zhang Lan never cared about these things. Sometimes, this also aided him. It could help him deceive some enemies. Is that so? Then I shall let the other summit leaders decide the exact time, all right? Mo Jangdong asked. Zhang Lan had no problems. He didn't care. Have you been to the Jade Pool? Mo Jangdong asked again. Zhang Lan shook his head. I came to see Master immediately. Then go see the goddess first. I have something for you to do tomorrow. It will take quite some time, said Mo Jangdong. After Zhang Lan agreed, he left the Ninth Summit. Mo Jangdong was silent as he watched Zhang Lankai make his way to the Jade Pool. He took out the Golden Lotus that Zhang Lan had returned. The Heavenly Tribulation Golden Lotus was forged by the Kunlun ancestor with the Heavenly Tribulation Mystic Rock. It is a protective Dharma treasure for one's tribulation transcendence. As long as a Heavenly Tribulation appears, it will definitely resonate and leave behind the aura of the Heavenly Tribulation. It will dissipate only after a hundred years. At this moment, the Golden Lotus was opened, and a complete Golden Lotus appeared in his palm. After taking a closer look, he muttered softly to himself. There are no traces. Zhang Lan had already transcended the tribulation to become an immortal, but the Golden Lotus didn't resonate at all. There can only be two possibilities. One, the tribulation Golden Lotus was extremely far away from his heavenly tribulation. 
The other possibility is that Zhang Lan did not transcend the tribulation at all. At this moment, the golden lotus began to shrink before finally turning back into a pearl. Holding the golden lotus, Mo Jangdong disappeared from the spot. When he reappeared, he was in the Ninth Summit's library. It had been many years since he walked in. The one who came in most frequently was Zhang Lan. This was where Zhang Lan studied. Zhang Lan had read a lot of books and was very diligent in his studies. Mo Jangdong had always felt gratified about this. Normally speaking, this was already Zhang Lan's private study area. He didn't have any intention of coming in to disturb him. But today, he needed to come in and take a look, to confirm some things. Mo Jangdong stopped in front of the bookshelf and did not make a move. A book automatically flew out from the bookshelf and was placed in front of him. Then, he automatically flipped through it. Finally, it stopped at the back. There are no traces of him having read the books at the back. Did he read up to here? Mo Jangdong took a look at the content. It was about the cultivation experiences of Heaven Immortals. Heaven Immortal. A look of enlightenment appeared in Mo Jangdong's eyes. I see. That was why I felt that way when I went out for training for the first time. I felt that the thousand years of providence was extremely important to him. I kept having the feeling that he would meet something. What I did not expect was that he would really reach the immortal's door on that trip. I was the one who gave him the final push. Mo Jangdong smiled and shook his head. I was wondering why he suddenly went out to train. So it turns out he wants to take this opportunity to fake his heavenly tribulation. Once one transcends a heavenly tribulation, it is impossible for one to draw down another heavenly tribulation. Thus, he had decided to make a trip out again. This should be the main reason why he wanted to go out. So, Mo Jangdong sighed. He hasn't actually had a single experience of going out to train. This was a headache. Without any hesitation, Mo Jungdong walked out of the library. The book automatically closed and returned to its original position. At the same time, the lotus flower began to bloom. In the end, it separated and disappeared in midair. With this, no one will know that he hasn't transcended the tribulation. After leaving the library, Mo Jangdong vanished from the spot. He returned to the peak of the Ninth Summit. He didn't seem to care about what had just happened and pretended that nothing had happened. Clear skies. Zhang Lan flew into the air on his sword. He was headed in the direction of the Jade Pool. He did not know that his master had gone to the library. However, he was curious about what his master would ask him to do tomorrow. He had just advanced to the human immortal realm, so he should not need to look for opportunities to break through. That shouldn't be the case. The details would have to wait until tomorrow. It shouldn't be too difficult. After a while, the jade pool was right before his eyes. He reached out and touched the jade pool's fog, informing his senior sister that he had come. He had just checked where they usually left messages for each other. His senior sister was not in seclusion. A moment later, the barrier around the jade pool began to disappear. His senior sister did not come out, it looked like she was letting him in. Without any hesitation, Zhang Lan rode his sword inwards. The winter wind was a little cold, but it didn't feel cold inside the jade pool. It was rather warm. After flying for some time, Zhang Lan saw the peach tree at the jade pool. At this moment, there was a beautiful and cold girl standing under the tree. It was a normal Ao Longyu. She seemed colder than before. Would dragons catch a cold too? Zhang Lan thought. Who? The wind blew Zhang Lan's clothes and he landed on the Jade Pool Peak. In front of Xiao Yu, senior sister, long time no see, Zhang Lan said softly. Ao Longyu looked at Zhang Lan before shrinking at a speed visible to the naked eye. From sexy to cute. From having a limited vision of the other party, he now had a vast field of vision. Junior brother, do you know how much time has passed? Xiao Yu looked at Zhang Lan with anger in her eyes. Fifteen years? Zhang Lan tried to answer. It seemed that his senior sister still needed to question him in Xiao Yu's form. Fifteen years, one month and three days, Xiao Yu answered. Zhang Lan was stunned. His senior sister remembered it so clearly. Xiao Yu didn't say anything else. She took out the wooden sword and handed it to Zhang Lan. After receiving the wooden sword, Zhang Lan sat to the side and began to embed the sword with his sword intent. Xiao Yu sat behind him and leaned against him. Senior sister. Zhang Lan suddenly called out to Xiao Yu. 
Yes. Xiao Yu leaned against Zhang Lan and answered. At this moment, she was dangling her feet in the air. After hearing the response, Zhang Lan opened his mouth and spoke. He told Xiao Yu what he wanted to tell her. I've become an immortal. The moment he finished his sentence, Xiao Yu's swaying feet also stopped. Chapter 400 The Legacy of Kunlun. Xiao Yu slowly lowered her feet and remained silent for a while. Zhang Lan wasn't in a hurry. He only continued his job of embedding the sword with his dragon slaying sword sword intent. Sometime later, Xiao Yu's feet started shaking again as she said. So junior brother really wants to secretly surpass me. Thankfully, I've already advanced. Junior brother, prepare to be defeated in the next challenge match. Ignorant, arrogant, foul-mouthed dragon, Zhang Lan thought. Although he didn't see his senior sister's expression, he could still hear the smile in her voice. At this moment, Xiao Yu was leaning on Zhang Lan's back and looking up at the peach tree. The corners of her mouth curled up slightly. At night, Xiao Yu leaned on Zhang Lan's back. Junior brother, I'm going to sleep. Don't move. After Zhang Lan agreed, Xiao Yu fell asleep peacefully. Zhang Lan was surprised. Shouldn't a dragon lie down and sleep? However, on second thought, there was no difference between Xiao Yu lying on his back or her lying on the ground. Unless she was in her normal form. Without much thought, he continued to embed the wooden sword with his sword intent. He did it for one whole night, and the duration that it could last was roughly one month. That would do. It was morning. Xiao Yu yawned and stretched. She hadn't slept in a long time. Seeing that she was in her smaller form, she didn't mind. She continued stretching. A wooden sword was placed in front of her. It was the wooden sword that Zhang Lan had enhanced. After Xiao Yu received the wooden sword, Zhang Lan took out the cold autumn sword. I am returning this to senior sister. This time, he naturally did not use this sword. Firstly, there was no suitable place. Secondly, if he used it, he would be recognized. So he either didn't use it, or he used something no one else could recognize. Xiao Yu accepted the autumn sword. Clang, she pulled out half of it. After observing for a while, she realized that her junior brother still hadn't used it. But this was normal. Then, she returned it into the sheath and put it away. This is also senior sisters. Zhang Lan took out a candied fruit. The return of the fair trade. Xiao Yu took a glance but did not reach out her hand. Instead, she opened her mouth and bit the candied fruit. Then, she held it in her hand and said, Let me send junior brother back. I shall teach you how to ride on your sword. Zhang Lan nodded. He didn't know why his senior sister liked to fly with him on his sword. A moment later, at the ninth summit, Xiao Yu's brow furrowed as if she was thinking, but also seemed angry. Junior brother, do you feel that the distance between the ninth summit and the jade pool is getting closer? Xiao Yu looked at Zhang Lan and asked. It's because senior sister's cultivation is getting higher and higher, Zhang Lan answered. Human immortals were naturally faster when traveling on their swords. However, they still needed some time. No it's because junior brother is getting closer and closer to me. Xiao Yu laughed. Then, she jumped in front of Zhang Lan and said. All right, I plan to give you a gift. Junior brother, close your eyes. Zhang Lan was surprised. Close his eyes? What does senior sister want to give? Zhang Lan asked curiously. Just close your eyes. Xiao Yu covered Zhang Lan's eyes with her hands. The moment his vision was blocked, Zhang Lan felt his lips being touched. They soon separated. Xiao Yu quickly removed her hand. After recovering his vision, Zhang Lan saw that Xiao Yu had already left on her sword. I'm going back, came Xiao Yu's voice. Zhang Lan saw that his senior sister had returned to her normal appearance, and she even had dragon horns on her head. She had undergone semi-dragonification again. After his senior sister disappeared from his sight, he touched his lips. The smell of candied fruits. The next time he ate a candied fruit, it might remind him of what happened today. He shook his head and walked towards the top of the ninth summit. He wanted to know why his master was looking for him. After a while. Master. Zhang Lan stood behind his master and greeted respectfully. Mo Jangdong was looking at the clouds in the sky. No one knew what he was thinking. Zhang Lan's arrival brought him back to reality. He turned around to look at Zhang Lan before speaking. 
After becoming an immortal, you need to understand more things. Spells, techniques, knowledge. They are all indispensable. The Ninth Summit's library is rather limited. I went to Kunlun's library to ask them to copy some books. They'll probably finish them today. Go get it back. Yes, master. Zhang Lan immediately answered. New books. This was a good thing for him. He had not finished reading the books in the Ninth Summit's library. But he didn't mind adding more to the collection. He could have a greater variety to choose from. This was extremely beneficial for him, and it was also one of the paths to becoming stronger. Oh yes, take this. Mo Jangdong took out a piece of jade and explained. Your cultivation level is insufficient to access the books of the upper echelons of the Kunlun library. With this, you can go up and check them up. However, do not look at books that are meant for those at a higher realm. It can easily bring about negative effects. As for spell techniques, you can try to understand them. Zhang Lan immediately nodded and said respectfully. Thank you, master. This way, he could read about more things. However, he did not dare to casually flip through it. Some books were very sensitive and others could easily detect if something went wrong. Thus, even if he could read it, he would not. No one knew if Imperial Lord Shi he was staring at the library. Safety first. By the way, I still have some books here. When the time comes, place them in the library. You can sort them out yourself, Mo Jangdong instructed. Zhang Lan nodded. He was a bit surprised. Was there a need for such a large change after his transcension to become an immortal? At the Kunlun library, Zhang Lan arrived once again. He was rather curious about what kind of books his master had gotten for him. How high would the level be? Some things could not be categorized by levels. And some things were related to levels, for example, spells. Zhang Lan didn't care much about the low-level spells. It was fine as long as he knew about it and understood roughly how it worked. If he were to encounter an enemy who used it, it wouldn't be impossible for him to identify and counter it. Kunlun Library Management Office. Senior brother, I'm here to get the books for the Ninth Summit. Zhang Lan spoke politely to a middle-aged man. It seemed like the other party had just become a true immortal. The Ninth Summit? Zhang Sheng was recording some things and could not react for a moment. Then, he remembered. Oh, go ask junior brother Chao and see how the progress is. There might still be some time left before it is fully prepared. Then, he continued recording. Zhang Lan didn't disturb him and instead found the busy junior marshal brother Chao. He was a golden core cultivator. It seemed like he had just joined the sect. After explaining the purpose of his visit, Junior brother Chao rummaged through some things and said apologetically. Senior brother, can you wait for a moment? The last part can be completed in the afternoon. Senior brother, you can go in and read some books first. Was he here early? Zhang Lan didn't mind. He walked towards the library. He decided to take a look around and try to see how high the jade could bring him up to. Just to try. He held the jade and walked up the stairs. The passage was unobstructed. He soon arrived at the floor meant for true immortals. There were many books here, and he roughly looked through them. There was nothing he was really interested in. Then, he came to the Heaven Immortals level and saw a book there. It was called, The Relic of Kunlun. Upon seeing this book, his interest was piqued. There were nine summits left behind in Kunlun. Every summit was different. The first and ninth summits were the most special. He wondered if there would be any records of it here. He took out the book and opened the catalog. He realized that there were no records of Ninth Summit. The contents were Kunlun Heart Sutra, Heavenly Tribulation Golden Lotus.